just let you know. Rick. I know we do this every time. What episode is this? 29. 29. The 29th episode. Right, okay, game faces. Uh, welcome, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, one and all, to episode 29 of Heresy Hammer. It's myself and Robert today, joined by a man, a myth, a legend, <laughs> an enigma, if you will. A man whose literal reputation precedes him. Uh, <laughs> William, Builder Destroyer Henry of the Merchant Princelings, uh, please introduce yourself. A pleasure, one and all, and a pleasure for having me on, guys, as well. I was really hoping that I wasn't going to get labelled the Destroyer again, but <laughs> the Fabled yeah. Heights, one just one just can't seem to escape them. But it's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. You're both very, famous, very famous and infamous. Perfect. Delicious. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Speaking of people who are both famous and infamous, I want to shout out our uh, beautiful partners, um, no, we're not. We're going to do this first. I've already forgotten what we're doing. We only checked these slides about two minutes ago. Uh, so, Rob, wrong, if, he, but... if you if you need to know, is at Meta's Miniatures. If you're not one of the twenty two thousand people that seems to fucking like him, uh, I am at D six underscore Miniatures, and Will should be at Curse These Metal Hands. But but what are you actually? <laughs> well, so, what are I'm going to have to now. In fact, while we're doing. This I will try and change it because change it, yeah. Really, if you're if you if you're yeah. somebody who's keen on Peep Show, you will know uh what Curse These Metal Hands is. But um yeah, yeah I've, I've been trying to encourage Will for a very long time to change his uh his his act to that. But I think it's only hands, isn't it? I think it's actually yeah, yeah, so underscore only hands with a Z and then an underscore as well. Yeah. Um, oh. but it but if you haven't watched Peep Show, you should definitely go and watch it as well. Oh, yeah, it's one of the greatest shows I've ever made. Yeah. Do it, do it after this. Keep watching yeah, this first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please, please watch through to the end because otherwise it hurts Rob's ego really badly, and it also hurts the algorithm. Okay, um, yeah, exactly. So, speaking of the algorithm, if you're uh, new to Heresy Hammer, why don't you give us a subscribe? And if you like what we're doing already, then why not hit the old thumbs up button? Tell your friends, leave a comment, do a dance. Um, speaking of people doing dances. Um, and you shout out uh, Beowulf Miniatures. Uh, Beowulf are a uh, print on demand service. So if you need any accessorizing of your miniatures or complete miniatures of their own accord, then why not check out um, Beowulf Miniatures? Um, if they've got some cool stuff you like, then ask them to print it off for you. If you've got a file you need printing, why not send it over? This, that, and the other. Um, if they don't immediately respond to you, why not also try our other beautiful printing service, uh, Gate 3D? Uh, so um, both of these uh, organizations have been instrumental in producing our first miniature, which is due for dispatch to some of our beautiful patrons very, very, very shortly. Um, but before we talk about days. that... Three days. And be three out. days. We're going to start sending them out. Three three days. Uh, so when this actually comes out, it'll be more like... Two days, right? And a half, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fifty something hours before they start hitting the uh, hitting the post bags of yeah. this wide world we we uh, we live in. Um, if you live in the southwest and you uh, want to play some games, why not check out Curtain Games and Oakhampton Games? Um, they have been uh, great supporters of ours in the kind of few months they've they've been a show sponsor with stuff for our events, putting on some really really good heresy events locally as well. And they also have an online store which they have discounted heresy miniatures. What more could one ask for? It's all you need. It's all you need. Oh, exactly the Please. stuff you want for less money than it should cost. Come on, <laughs> I'll take it. I'm in. I'm in. Where do I sign? <laughs> And the uh, money so, you save there, you just go and get some bits 3D printed. It's yeah, just exactly, a perfect right? win. Exactly. You know I mean? exactly. So you're going to spend the money anyway. Why not get some, May as well some use free, it. Yeah. free goodies off the back of it? Um, so go follow those guys at Curtain Games on Instagram and Curtain Games at Code UK for the web store. And there's loads of Facebook groups. If you want to get involved in some of the stuff that's going on, um, then search for, I think they've got a dedicated heresy Facebook group, which I frequent every so often. Um Right. The main oh, topic of show today, as you may well have guessed by the presence of, of such a man as Will Henry, Jesus is Christ. we are... Oh, I know, right? There, there is serious pressure coming on here. because Getting hot already. Ooh, 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 <laughs> mama. If anyone knows anything about anything, it's Will's knowledge of the Iron Hands. Of the Supreme Iron Tenth. Yeah. yeah. So we could not think of a, a better gentleman to join okay. us 
for this evening. It's been a very hotly requested uh, review in our Legion review series, and oh, we finally, That's interesting. yeah, surprisingly so. It's, it it oh. seems like you know legions with cool models and good rules are actually quite popular. It's almost <laughs> like there's a reoccurring theme there. Yeah. Almost, mm, yeah. almost, almost. Well, we'll see later on, won't we? Yeah, yeah. They might be trash. You never know. They might be trash. Speaking of things that's not trash, uh, is our this next. This is not trash. Yeah. Is our next event. So, um, uh, Rob, why don't you give us a bit of a rundown as to the Battle Royale? Why might people be interested in, uh, in joining yeah, us for this weekend? That's a good quality? question. So, this is just guys and girls and anything uh, else that you may want to be coming together and just smashing each other's dicks in. Um, there's no narrative to this event, it makes it quite clear. Um, it's just people playing against people and uh, we will have a first, second and third along with some other prizes as well. Uh, tickets are £45 um, and but there is an option when you check out to uh, order food along with your ticket as well. Um, there are of course restrictions as normal um, but if you want a uh, fun event over a course of a weekend at an awesome menu where we will look after you where there'll be prizes at the end of the event and awards as well come along to this. It's in two months time. It will probably be the last event you go to in the year because December's always jam packed full of like family stuff. Um, so make sure that you get your ticket. Um, we've got still a few more um, available, um, but the major thing about this event is that you must use the Primark box when creating your list. So it's basically a Primark off that, of course, includes uh, characters like Constantine Baldor as well, if you want to use Talons of the Emperor. Um, but it would be great to see that many uh, that many Primarchs. What we won't do, though, is have, say, a Lionel Johnson against a Lionel Johnson. We shall make sure that you uh, play an army that's different, but you could be playing against Loyalist armies, even though you might be Loyalist yourself. So just something to bear in mind. It's just people playing people. Dudes well, and chicks playing dudes and chicks. And yeah, what, and they don't. Yeah. Exactly. And what we're trying to ascertain is who is the real king dick kicker within the Primarch sphere, right? Yeah, that's that's really what it's about. Yeah. Who is Primo Mark? Yeah. Whether whether Prime Rules Three Primo Prime Mark. Yeah, I mean Ferris Manus, as we'll come to, is gonna be <laughs> Let's be honest, he's going to be high up that list. He is going to be high up that list. So anyway, um, head over to uh, Eventbrite and search yeah. for either Heresy Hammer or the Battle Royale and you can purchase your tickets there. Uh, we have had a couple of returns for my event at the end of the month. Um, so uh, you can either contact me directly or contact the show on Instagram or by email um, because I think a couple of them were not on Eventbrite because uh, we owe subscribed straight away. So we released some additional tickets that we just sell direct. So if you want a ticket, give us a shout. I'm sure we can accommodate you. Yeah. Um, right. So. I think another event. We've got another event. Not we our have event, another though. event. Yeah. This is not so, our event. No. So uh, Battle to the Bone, Dan and Ian, who works at Boards and Swords, um, had an event, I think, uh must be July, I think me and my friend James went. You can see James's uh Kratos uh there. I think tickets were around 40, 45 pounds, and that included food as well. Uh included a little personal pizza from Domino's. Uh wow. we got I I think I mentioned this last time, but we got a little personalized dice when I said Rob Medwell on it, and it had a little Sons of Horus um emblem for the army uh that I was taking. Uh I had a, an enormous fun. It was uh truly a narrative event with all sorts of bonkers uh things going on, like uh, my opponent being able to remove a unit completely from the board. So if you are somebody who is looking for a fun, immersive narrative event, uh, make sure you get over to the Tears of Learner, 28th to 29th of October, and you'll be able to grab a ticket from the Boards and Swords website. It is in Derby. Um, so Never lots heard. of transport links there, but also lots of hotels, Premier Inns, et cetera, et cetera, nearby as well. And you can always stop off a uh, trip in Nottingham. It's not really that far away, is it? So you can... No. So half hour, forty-five minute drive, easy. Exactly, easy peasy, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So you can go see the home of Warhammer itself as well while you're driving up there. Uh, so yeah, go uh, grab yourself a ticket from there. It's definitely worth going. I'd be going if I didn't already have plans in Ibiza. You're playing Heresy in Ibiza. I'm not playing Heresy in Ibiza. I'm just going to be sitting by the beach. Not interested. Uh, drinking but, Diet Coke in Ibiza. Not interested. Uh, not going on a mad right. one. <laughs> mm, yes, yeah, going to be a mad Whoa. one. What's this? 
Whoa. Hey, <laughs> I don't like you don't Whoa. know. What's this? What's this cheeky little number? <laughs> so if you've been hiding under a rock for the last six months and not watching Heresy Hammer, A, I hope it's a comfortable rock. I'm sure you've made it very homely. <laughs> Secondly, uh, this is going to be the last and final chance to get your hands on our Castle Crusher miniature. So um, if you head over to Patreon, um, we have a number of tiers where we supply a huge amount of additional content from just £3 uh, a month. Um, However, for our Praetor tiered patrons, not only do you get your name read out by me and poorly pronounced at the end of the show, you are also now as uh, your uh, reward for your loyalty and fealty to us for the past six months getting sent this phenomenal miniature. So um, this kit builds two complete castle crushes. It's been designed by... um, by Virgin Realm, who, let's be honest, is the go-to man for uh, iconic and uh, individualized heresy stuffs uh, when it comes to 3D sculpting. sculpting. Um, this kind of complete multi-part kit is, enables you to build two miniatures, one caped, one not caped, and a variety of weapons. It can hold a skull. It can hold a thunder hammer. It can hold a sword. It can shoot a gun. There's loads. It's even got a scythe for all your Death Guard players as well. But um, it's only available after six months subscription and the final day to get your hands on it will be the 30th of August. 31st of August. Yeah. 31st of August. Yeah. Um, so you will have seen this uh, all over the internet and all over our shows for a little while now. But this, if you want to get your hands on it, is the last chance. So head over to Patreon. Um, if you are able to support us in any way possible, we fully appreciate it. And... Um, We just wanted to say thanks to everyone that's supported this miniature. We know people are super keen to get their hands on it. The first sort of 30 or so are going to be going out uh, yet imminently. Imminently, yeah. And we can exclusively reveal... Sorry, sorry, just before before you get to the really exciting news. What? um, Just two things I want to say. The first thing is, just to make it clear, this is a gift, isn't it, to our patrons. You cannot... This is unavailable to buy. You cannot buy this, nor are we selling this miniature. This is just... A gift to say thank you, uh, a unique and special gift. But it will be burned after reading, right? So after yep. it's been printed, you won't be able to buy it. Uh, you can't get more off of us once the last one, the 67th one, has gone out uh, in six months' time, whenever it is. Um, that's it. That, that's it. There, there won't be any more the, the, forever. And we will get the people who printed them for us to delete the file as well. That 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 is it. Not even I us. Heard- I heard that both uh, the uh, printing partners are going to be um, herding their computers into skips immediately after the last miniatures have been run off. I heard that. I heard that. And um, second thing is the Not other thing you get as a top tier uh, freighter level is mm. that once every four months you get a centurion. We do, we pull your name out. Well, you don't. You don't. You're not guaranteed. You there is a chance. There is a chance you, that you get you one. Will get a centurion. Um, and it will be pre- painted uh, by uh, one of the team. So Lee's up next. So that's also happening next month as well. So if you have been, if you joined us at Centurion or Praetor level, uh, every four months uh, you have a chance to win a Centurion model of your choice. Um, somebody, uh, Edgar, had um, the Tylos Rubio model last time, mm-hmm. and we got we painted it up in Alpha Legion colours for him, um, and he was very happy with that. Um, but Lee is going to be painting uh, yours up, whoever it might be, whoever is the winner. So uh, make sure you sign up for Centurion if you uh, level or pray to level if you want a chance to uh, get that. But sorry, John, I interrupted you because you've got some very exciting news about what might be coming as the next gift. It's breaking news. Um, I think, to be honest with you, we were absolutely blown away by just how thirsty people were to get their hands on... Um, like individual miniatures that you're not going to see elsewhere. So we've decided to do it all over again. Um, yeah. We can't <laughs> reveal too much information right now, but we can tell you it might be slightly more heavily armoured and maybe sort of a bit more flag orientated. <laughs> It'll be very inspiring. Whatever. So exactly. It will definitely be inspiring. One might say it might even make you fearless. Um, <laughs> So if you're interested to get your hands on that, um, you will be able to from 1st of September is when you'll need to be subscribed from to be yeah. amongst the first to receive that, whatever that may be. But anyway, subscribe today and you get both of them. Right. Uh, without further ado, 
Rob has selected the uh, miniatures for hashtag Heresy Hammer this time around. So um, if, again, if you've been living under that comfortable mossy rock, um, then you may or may not know that uh, if you submit your images on Instagram using the hashtag Heresy Hammer, we will go through and select some of our favorites. Only some, because we can't get through the thousands that we've got all the time, but sure. some that stand out and speak to us. And then we're going to chat about how brilliant they are. So without further ado, Rob. Uh, yeah, so uh, Matt Gorpro, um, who is uh, a a man with impeccable taste because he's come to our previous events before. Um, Fine up... taste. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's painted up this absolutely uh, awesome uh, Thanax. No, well, this isn't a Thanax. It's Thanatar. Thanatar. Sorry. Oh, Excuse me. Now. And but this is why people what... don't take you seriously. Yeah, well, exactly right. Um, so what kind of Thanatar is this? It's a, it's a special kind Thanatar. of Thanatar. This is a Thanatar Calyx. Right, yeah. Thanos Arcalyx. Um, I think it's particularly striking because it's got the um, uh, the red metallic scheme, um, and I just thought it was awesome. Like I saw this online the other day, I was like, "Man, alive! This is this is brilliant." And a great accompaniment to just the the black of the Iron Hands. I think it just spices it up a little bit. It would be awesome to see this as an allied detachment. It obviously matches what he already has as well, yeah. um, but has a really distressed uh, feel to it. He's done. Awesome job. Uh, I think everybody who's seen this has been really uh, impressed just going off the uh, comments as well. Well done, Matt. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. I'm so, Hopefully, I think I'm seeing it this weekend. He's going to a similar event that I'm going to. And I excellent. think he's taking this in his Brethren of Iron list, which oh, is going to be awesome. So, be oh, great. So Iron Hands Brethren of Iron. With is that Brethren of Iron? Is that like the Castlax um, rival? Is that, yeah, is that... so I think it, it pseudo makes mech uh, usable within a primary detachment of the Legion of Southeast. Got it. So, oh, right. awesome. And to do it with Iron Hands, Chef's Kit, perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Mm. Great. It doesn't get any I fucking mm. love the eyes. It's the eyes that sell it for me. I, I was yeah, just about perfect. to say, those blue eyes just, just cut to the core of me. Oh, Old blue eyes. Just so, like me, eh? That's why oh, yeah. people are so Best eyes. by my presence. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd like to talk about this actually, if I'm being honest yeah. with you, because um, Aaron's been a staunch supporter of ours again for a long time. He has got a really awesome um, uh, Ultramarine arm he's been working on for like years and years, like since lockdown. I want to say, like, Aaron and I became friends during some of the occasional sort of discord, uh, during the time when we were all stuck inside, fucking twiddling our thumbs and painting our toys. Um, I think. If you get a chance, you should really head over to uh, his Instagram account, which is uh, Hammer and Nails 30k. Um, it used to be Hammer and Nails 40k, but you can very much tell that he <laughs> has learnt the error of his ways, and he has now become uh, a real like kind of top tier heresy painter. And these are absolutely fantastic. He's got yeah, a lovely great. painting style, um, and he's, but he's got some really cool um, kind of individual pieces shown. Um, as much as I love seeing army shots, as we all know, um, I think you should check out his individuals uh, over on his uh, over his Instagram page. Yeah, he's done a great job with this. Well he done. Has done a great job. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, speaking of people who've done a great job, what about this this thing here? Well, it's it's interesting you say that because we only recorded a show yesterday about night, so now I know what this does. Yeah. Uh, does it have the center shell upgrade? I think that's the that's the real question. Uh, this is this is brilliant. Well, looks do like you a, want looks to... like an Ulan to me? An Ulan, yes, a speedy a speedy night. Um, well, do you want to talk about this one? What's your thoughts about hard salad paints? Hard, hard what a great name as well. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's absolutely marvelous. Um, it's very it's very Veroni esque, but not, it is well, yeah, exactly right. But but not whole hog Veroni, which is one of the most cl classic ones you always see. I think he's done a great great job on this. Yeah, it's brilliant. I love the gold. It catches her light. Just the, the the shiny pearlescent green as well works beautifully. Um, the pose as well. It'd be it'd be interesting to play. Um, but yeah. The pose. Oh. And yeah, it's done a great job. There. Absolutely marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. And I presume this is plastic as well. It is. Yeah, it's, it's plastic. So he's yeah. done a really good job to get this done just so bloody quickly as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which sometimes when you get that new kit and oh mate, there's no better feeling. Oh, and puts itself together. It almost paints itself as well. So you, <laughs> I know, right? It's just flying on. And salad man, he's done done the Lord's work. I love it. Well done. Yeah, great job. That's nice right. Cool. Next up, we were all Ooh, like surprised this. at these when we were just kind of going through the, the the dress rehearsal before we started recording. We were like, "Who the hell is this guy? And where's he come from? And what about these night lords?" 
Rob, what made you? Uh, what made these stand out to you? You picked uh, them. They just. I think the whole combination of the uh, the contrast between the models themselves and those uh, orangey uh, bases just made it just stand out. I think Nylos is always such a tricky army to get right. Yeah. Um, without. Uh, bordering on the cartoonish or without it bordering on the boring i think is the other other thing being yeah. too dark um and i think the painted count i love that name uh by the way uh the just done an absolutely fantastic job and he's posted an awful lot of late as well so you can see this is just one uh shot of his praetor or centurion or whatever um but there's lots more to see on his account so make sure you go um give him a follow because well, there's very awesome models on Absolutely. He says in his uh, in his description here that he's uh, slow pan and he's starting to lose in the mojo. So why don't we all head over, give him a follow, give him a little like, give him a bit of a, a G up. And uh, hopefully he can regain some of that mojo with the help of our wonderful Harris Yama community. So go and do that immediately. Uh, no, don't do that. Finish watching this first. Then do that. <laughs> but yeah, I think these are great. Like, as you were saying, Rob, them being um, almost, well, cartoony. You yeah. Know saying this. These have a very interesting take on them. Classically, yeah. I always imagine Night Lords to be very dark blue, yeah. shiny as well, glossy yes. with thousands of lightning strikes. Yeah. These are these are the almost like anime. Map. The, yeah, the, the, they're, like, they're, they're really yeah. matted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good take and on them, I think. Yeah, I think it works beautifully. I, I think it really, really works on these as well. And the the the, the color of the base is popping against the bold yeah. reds as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. I, I like these a lot. Yeah, as you yeah. said, when we're doing the older, uh, the old pre-run, I was yeah. like, "Whoa, hang on, whoa, 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 what's this?" Lots more to see on his account as well, right? There's lo loads, loads to see. So, yeah, some good like conversions that. in the background as well. So, yeah, that's smart. Primo, right? Uh, so we were again talking before we recorded about how Les has just come out of absolutely nowhere with some of like the best Sons of Horus. In the just, Eastern, right? and there are so many people. Well, yeah. there, I don't know if it's because like I've been painting Sons of Horus for like the last few months, so that I'm I'm being shown more Sons of Horus. But I seem to feel like everyone's painting Sons of Horus at the moment. This is hot. It's great Legion. It's powerful, Legion. powerful choice. Yeah, top yeah. dog. Um, and I think um, so. Uh, I believe I don't want to cast any aspersions here, but I believe um, Les is or uh, part of the army painting team up at Warhammer World. So when oh, you see oh, those oh. big, big army shots, be it for forty k for or, you know oh, upcoming no. games for yeah. AOS etc., that Les will have had a hand in getting those ready to uh, you know get the juices flowing and get those stuff uh, flying off the shelf. But he's clearly invested an awful lot of time recently to um, paint up some fucking top tier Sons of Horus. And you can see mm, that the, mm. the heavy metal influences throughout kind of what he's been doing. Um, I think that this is has always been like such a great base for an Abaddon. Yeah, it's like, fantastic. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's really brought that model into like the new 2.0 aesthetic. Yeah like look right you know i i think do you, do you know what head um this is, that is, is the, just... that's the plastic abaddon head is it oh. yeah. i'm not gonna lie guys i thought i thought this was the official kit i was like this kit oh, is... no no this is this is this, this is no head, yeah, yeah. No, it's, a, it's a it's a huge uh conversion so yeah. he's got that head but also i think it's the plastic sword from the mark six kit um that he's clearly yeah. sort of taken off because that's not the hand that it belongs to and yeah. it's a cataphracty uh lightning claw. resin cataphracty power claw yeah so um, so he's uh, he's so he's done must have done some green stuff work to to get that to work so yeah it's uh, uh i've got an awful lot of love for this i could never have spotted that head but now you say it uh john it's like I'm oh, sure it's the, i'm 90 i think you're right no no i think you're, i think you're absolutely right i think it is that head. yeah 100 percent. this but, this could be the official model from forge yeah, world is, yeah oh 100 yeah, percent. is that spot on and the painting style as you said it's exactly yeah. what you imagine when you log onto the Forge World site and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's yeah. I, the, the other the, um, Winter Soldier Les, I, I don't, I'm using his name, but I don't, I don't, I don't know Les really that much. But <laughs> number one, um, number one, um, uh, he, I, the first time I saw his work was when he did a sons, he did that librarian model, librarian, the new Marxist yeah. one with the um, the Sons of Forest head, and I think everybody looked at that and was like, holy fuck, that that has just made this model like, you know. He's up level exponentially better, yeah. like by a thousand percent. Incal incalculable, 
In yeah, how much better and, and, it and it was pretty much uh, it, it was nuts. But I'd love to see like an army shot because I think that this would just be a stunning looking uh, looking force. Right? So I, think I believe, I believe that he's going to be at the Warhammer World team event in November, to which we all have tickets to. Oh, yes, we do. So yes, we do. Uh, perhaps some of you lucky little sausages out there might be uh, fortunate enough to end up facing this army. And let's be honest, I'd be very surprised if it wasn't in the cabinets at the end of the... Uh, absolutely. Scott. Yeah. Scott. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's terrific. He's done a great job. It's well done, Les. Right. Friend of the show, Les. That's what... That's yeah, absolutely. Uh, more more sons of horrors here, right? Just can't the 16th help yourself, train you continues. It's just off the hook. Yeah. I, no, I couldn't help myself. No, I'm not sure why. I've just been inceptive with lots of uh, sons of horrors recently because I've been pending myself. Um, but you're right. I've seen an awful lot of them, but they, these just... It just looks so good. Mark Six looks so good as Sons of Horus. Yeah. The heads are super good as well. I think that they are one of the legions that really benefit from just dipping your hand into your pocket and getting a hold of some of the Forge World headsets. Yeah. I remember when Mark Six came out and I was like, I'm out. I, I don't like it. <laughs> but once you've worked with it, once you yeah. build it, once you paint it, once you played with them as well, there is there, there, there are a few bits as good as them. And this, uh, I agree with that. Yeah, I and this is just the painting's beautiful. It's it's like grim dark as well. It's it's got a lovely level of weathering on it that I think is absolutely perfect as well. And usually, I'm a huge fan of black rims, but the brown rims on this, it's fine. I think they, yeah, I, it's, I think it's, they make it pop. I think it's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. It's good as well. Yeah, I really like this. And I don't know what tufts this, uh, he's using. I know you're a fan of tufts as well. Rob. But I, I think he's don't... been washing them clearly, though. Okay. Obviously, yeah. obviously. But yeah. but JR Wargaming, if you're watching this, <sighs> please let us know what teeny tiny tufts you're using because yeah, I'd love to get some. We of those. need some of these tufts. Yeah, yeah. I, they're, they're great. They're teeny tiny. They're clearly like two men yeah. or something, but they, they look brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Absolutely wild. Uh, a great and, that, and that's it. That, br- that yeah, brings that's us it for those. Con- conveniently onto some more Sons of Horus. Oh, <laughs> just can't get enough of it. You these just these came out of Sons of Horrors. Yeah. absolutely nowhere. Yeah, proper left field, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. It was nuts, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. No one have these. Them, but we all wanted them, and now we all need them. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I um, I There was, of course, of course, uh, a lot of uh, hatred on Facebook, uh, on the Forge World uh, website, that went along the lines of, um, you know, we've had enough Sons of Horror stuff. But actually... I, as a Sons of Horror player, absolutely love this and, and yeah. sort of totally biased. But I think these are absolutely br- bloody brilliant. I think they're great. I mean, the the problem I think is you've got with this is that if we continue with the snail's pace of releases, uh, it, you know, the Raven Guard aren't going to be getting anything until 2040. Um, but uh, for Sons of Horror players, these, these are um, these are top notch, absolutely brilliant, you know, real character. Combine these with the uh, Sons of Horus heads as well on Mark VI. Uh, these will look absolutely brilliant as like Reavers yeah, or, yeah. or Veterans, right? They'll look so Ve- good. Veterans for these are, I really like as well. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that new axe aesthetic. Like when, when I got yeah. hold of a Vera and started painting him, I was like, this axe is fucking cool. I wish yeah. more axes yeah. were like this. Yeah, yeah. And then it's all of a sudden as if someone went, don't worry about it, John. We got you back. <laughs> Here's some new axes, axes bro. for you. <laughs> So I think I think from looking at the pictures, um, you've got there's a couple of uh, there's a Terminator option in there. The one in the middle is the fatter hand. Yeah. So he's oh, probably going to be for good a, pick. Yeah, for yeah. Terminator boy. And let's be honest, though, the Kasoran axes in the Just Aaron kit do not look like that. That's no, great. No. Um, and again, I think as well, like because Mark Six is that tiny little bit upscaled. I don't think that even the other clearly Mark Six orientated hands would look that out of place on on a Just Aaron given that Just Aaron are teeny tiny like, boys. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with the combi bolt as well. Fucking love the Lodge coins. I love the Fibros bolters. I'm just I'm loving them. Yeah, no. these these are these are absolute win, I think. Yeah the Lodge next time are amazing. i I've only just actually picked up on them as you said and yeah. Great. Next yeah. time I'm banging a forge I'd order in, I'll be sticking a pack onto the end. So I'm, uh, I'm just gonna is... bosh one out now, boys. Just <laughs> <for damn sure. laughs> I'm just gonna send it now. But... What, what about forge I'd order? <laughs> this, I need some of these now. Done. That's it. I'm in. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. A, a bit a bit blindsided by these, but I think it they these feel like a feel to me like a little bit of a filler release, as in like let's 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 give them some in. Let's pop a little bit of bait out there. It's and interesting. Yeah. Until something, until something big is coming. 
It's, uh, it's speak, speaking so, of things that oh, were out of left field. What oh. the fuck is going on here? So, on, yeah. so the the backstory on the original Imperial Fist Praetor. So, uh, uh, from my understanding, it was the first um, model 3D sculpted by Simon Egan, who oh, I think I think that's his name, and he had done the Primarchs previously, right? Or many yeah. of the Primarchs, if not most of the Primarchs, and the Imperial Fist Praetor, that that one, the running one. Yeah. Was his first go at 3D printing. At least that that's what I'd, I had heard. Uh, Simon, if you're watching the show, please let us know if this is uh, incorrect. Um, but um, because it was, um, this is what, again, what I heard. Uh, and I can't remember who told me this. But because the model was, it was all done and dusted and wrapped up during COVID, nobody had bothered to actually do a 3D test print to see what the scale was oh, of that no. model. And it just went straight to, uh, you know, it was obviously like printed, but it just went straight to the, the casters, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And nobody had gone, oh, okay, this is, this, this is the right scale. And when people got it, it was fucking huge. Like yeah, it, yeah. like the, the legs are the same size as Ferris Manus's legs. Like they're, they're fuck. He's a hulking motherfucker. Who- to give you some sort of real, a bit of real time information, I've actually got one sat on a shelf above me. And uh, bearing in mind that he is striding forwards and therefore not at his full height. Good point. Yeah. He is taller than Lorgar. Fuck. Is he that big? Fuck. That's yeah. mental. And, and Lorgar is standing up straight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. That's Imposing. Nice. Or, yeah. 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 So yeah. when people, when it had come out, people were like, this is insane. But also what it did was um, it fed into people's worst fears about the scale that 2.0 was going to go to. Yeah. And that was the other thing that happened. So you had uh, these shots of the new box set, the Age of Darkness box set come out. We hadn't had any official um, uh, kind of information, just the, the pictures of the back of the box set. And then you had this following it up. And so everybody was basically really cross. The whole scale looked like it was about to change. But what is quite clear is that the whole scale didn't change. Yeah. Certainly, like, it, by one or two millimetres, if you look at the new Mark VI, but it, it didn't really change. Everything fits in quite well. Uh, this this Praetor was just an anomaly. And what they did two weeks ago, maybe, maybe last week, is just say, we're getting rid of the old one. This is replacing it. And I think that this has caused quite a lot of controversy about whether it's a worse miniature um, why they're doing it, why they didn't just keep both, why they didn't just downscale. Um, my feeling is that if they downscaled it and then sold it, I oh, think even they, worse. they would be admitting that they made a mistake and they're unwilling, I think, to do that. And also, yep. you'd be in a situation where you go, okay, well, we know we got this wrong and people might ask for their money back because they're like, well, you knew you got this wrong and you didn't correct it. So I think what they've been forced to do is just re- like rescale it, make it smaller, yeah. repose it, so they get round having to offer refunds uh, to people. At least that's my wild okay. yeah, yeah. theory. But um, yeah, I just think you're in an impossible situation if you rescale a miniature and go, "Oh, actually, it was it meant was to be at scale." Yeah, uh, and then people are just gonna be like, "Well, you sold us a duff one, knowingly that it was at the wrong scale. We'd like our money back, and I'm, we'd like you to either, or give us a new one for free, please." So yeah. they've clearly not been able to go down that route. Just just repose it. Mm. For the worse, I think, because the other one was really dynamic. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, all a crying shame. I also think as well, it's uh, it was, I think that also the other thing as well, it was just caused like consternation with just like constant people fuck eye rolling. You know, people are like people like, uh, I have this conversation with my dog all the time, right? Uh, I'll bear with me. Powerful Ari. <laughs> send it. Yeah, powerful, powerful Ari. Exactly. And I'll be like, like he'll just like he'll find something to get annoyed about and like bark at something. I'm just like stop trying to get offended. Yeah. <laughs> like just stop trying to be offended by things. If you go looking for things to be offended by, you'll spend your entire life just moaning and being miserable. Like it was massive. I thought it was fucking cool. Like you can stick him next to some plastic tartarus, and do you know what? He looks like a praetor because he's big yeah. and imposing. Yeah. I I yeah. had no beef with it. I think that um, this kind of weird stealth release was kind of quite funny. Yeah, but more more for the reaction that it caused for uh, 
<laughs> as opposed to what it represented. And, and it was another, it was another Imperial was character. Another was Imperial other, character. That's the, the big one. As well, yeah. Right? yeah. That's the big one, I think. Yeah. And that and that was it really. But um look, I'm sure this wasn't particularly difficult to do. Let's be honest, right? I'm sure this it's was just a, case a, bit of... a twist on the model, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Jumping into the file, moving this Not about, lot, moving yeah. that, blah blah blah. Here you go, new model. Yeah. Do you right. think do you think the original one was more primary scale and as you said, Rob, it being during COVID times I, I, and all of that yeah, as well. I think I think the basic bit it, under it, the radar. It's, it's so big. Um, you know, it was you, fucking huge. It, when you compare the Lex, it's the same as Ferris Manus Lex, and mm-hmm. and Ferris Manus is a, is an absolute tank, but tank one ball. of the big boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just think that it was clearly an error, yeah. um, and you could see. That 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 it that it was uh that that it was an error. I think though, what was interesting, just more in general, is that it's probably more that old one. It's probably more scaled to what I think a normal Terminator should be. I actually think that normal Tartarus yeah, is probably yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and certainly, like the in the Indomitus plastic Indomitus is 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 like a much better scale for Terminator. Oh, yeah. But I think that as I said before. Uh, you know, I'd put money on that. Basically, they couldn't rescale it and do the same model because they'd be admitting yeah. there was a. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I supposed sh- to be a tactical like dreadnought, this. right? Yeah. yeah, I think this is great. I don't, th- I don't, I don't dislike it. I just think that. Um, cool. uh, I just think that the it's not often we get Terminator characters that are very dynamic. Yeah. Um, they're often holding a bolter, standing astride, and yeah, pointing a gun, or they're just doing some sort of generic. Heroic pose. I think the thing about that particular Imperial Fist Praetor was the the it was so dynamic that it was unusual because of that. Yeah. Um and that's you know, look at the Night Lords Praetors, right? They're just they're just static. Um, yeah. so yeah, but anyway, but yeah, not to put too fine a point, but it would um, be um, very interesting when people who already have the previous one get this one in their hands as well. I can actually do a size like side by side comparison. Oh, that's I when the fucking internet that. is gonna yeah, melt. Yeah, be really interesting to see, yeah. Yeah. yeah, people are going to be like a, just sitting there like a fucking with a face like a melted candle, just <laughs> on their eyes. Um, and then last week we got we got this, which was again nobody I no think, clue this. that this was coming. No. And this was re- what what I was like really really nice to see. Um, from my perspective was like I think Dark Mechanicum have clearly got more to come in the future because I think it's again it's such a sandbox list much like the militia list like it'd be nice to see them get a fleshed out list but yeah, yeah. what I thought that was cool about this was the fact that it gave you the option to bring in stuff that's never been in the game before yeah so they're really cool old models that you might have kicking around in an old collection it's like oh by the way you can now use these we've dropped these from 40k completely now we're not bringing across the kind of I think there would have been a real uh, pr- problem is the wrong word, but a, a real furore had they apported over things like the Maul of Fiends and the Hell Drakes, the kind of real kind of like Interesting. Um, yeah. Warcraft product from 40k. Mm. But Forge I would say, yeah, we we have this cool old stuff. Some of it's not available anymore, some of it is, but if you've got it, here's ways of, of jamming it into your uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. heresy army. I think it's great. Like yeah. those, the four units in this book, or four or five, was just. They never actually had official rules in first edition. Exactly they, right. This is all new. Third party, blah, 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 blah. But this is official. You can use them at Warhammer World with your word bearers or your Sons of Horus or whatever. Yep. I, think it's, I think it's a really clever, nice m- move. And it's almost it's almost an ode as well to older players as, as also like new players as well. I'm sure some people will be reading through this and going like, what the hell's a brass scorpion? Yeah, yeah. Checking, yeah, yeah. checking online and seeing it and going, yeah. okay, well, there you go. That's where my next pay packet is going straight. Yeah, in. that's a good point. Yeah, the models are fabulous as well, and yeah, yeah. the Kaitan as well. And K- Kaitan rules are off the chain as well. Yeah, it's it's mm. it's it's crazy, and with the knights obviously coming plastic now as well. Yeah. it's you can you, you can have another knight that's more chaosy, that's more traitor esque demon as well. I, I I think it's great. And and in um in 40k as well, it seems to be there's a slight push towards Dark Mech. Like just the law in mm-hmm. general, they've certainly pushing that as well. So maybe there's some behind the curtain moves that future releases might go that way into a full dark mechanical mesh range, which would be amazing. Yeah. 
That's that would be wonderful, right? I'm sure it's far down the line, but also as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just thinking about it, like you can now put your like plastic because obviously, like the 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 Kaitan as an example, right, is a, is a Lord of Skulls on a on a, essentially night legs. Yeah, yeah, on a, plastic, on Sarastus legs, plastic Sarastus legs. Well, you can make a fully plastic boy. Yeah. So, um, I think this is really cool. Like, we're not going into the rules. Um, because we haven't got time to be perfectly honest with you. But if you do want to go into the rules, you should check out the Merchant Princeling's podcast because I believe Will, oh, you, Tom, and Giles did, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. did a rules deep dive in your last episode. So yeah, uh, yeah. that's available on all podcasting platforms, yes? Spotify, Apple, blah, the, blah, what, blah. The two that, the two that matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're not listening to them, then do you even <laughs> podcast, bro? <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. So, yeah, if you don't already listen to the Merchant Prince, because I'm sure everyone here is watching does, uh, go check out, um, yeah, Will's Pod, and uh, they've just done a run-through of these. Um, but, like, the, the TLDR is, um, the rules are really good. They're balanced. They're going to be fun. They're going to be interesting. They're, they're engaging. as well. They're yeah. really fun, I think. Yeah. 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 They've and, taken a leap and out of the mechanic and book. Yeah, 100% yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, like, broken. They're not going to be, like, if you turn up with a brass scorpion, people are going to be like, oh, cool, right. How am I going to deal with this brass scorpion? Because right. this brass scorpion right, is... here we go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sleeves rolled up, cat backwards. And uh, as opposed to just thinking, oh, this is a fucking broken piece of shit. Or, yeah. you know, every time that anyone drops a super heavy down, especially in a starty super heavy, there's just, oh, whatever, mate. Oh, yeah. here Enjoy we go. Enjoy your 900-point Bane Blade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh... We've also got this to look forward to now. Tomorrow we, is it tomorrow? To, well, no. it will be today by the time this comes out. Ooh. So what we'll have is this glorious twelve hours or eighteen hours between us speculating now wildly on what it's going to be and yep. uh, us being proved entirely wrong. It could even be a whole new army. It could be the demon army from uh, like 30 yeah. seconds ago so, it could be yeah. the plastic solar that we believe is coming it could be this it could be that it could be something completely out of left field it could be should, fucking plastic yeah. rapiers we should, just should we, don't know. should we um should we go through each person and say what they think it is and then what they want it to be perhaps perhaps yeah. we should go, go for the john why don't you start us off what do you think it is and then what do you want it to be so i think it'll be mark three because i think that's but i almost i almost think that's too obvious because that's not a reveal because they've already been revealed as oh, has... uh, well 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 oh. well, 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 well okay well, 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 well. no they, no, they no, showed just out. a little picture right well the fact of the matter well, is though do you want to do you want to look up the definition reveal where i make my point <laughs> yeah not it wasn't like a full reveal with like on a white background nah. you know oh, i i think i think it will be largely mark for Okay. But okay. I think we also okay. might get a little a little surprise. Now I don't know what that surprise will be. It might be the fact that we get in like a tease of something else. Like I was saying uh in our uh, WhatsApp the other day that I, I would quite like them to do uh do you remember the the ta- the back end of last year? They did that like uh sort of like red and black silhouette of like a few things coming. People were like, yeah. oh, it's a fucking Cerberus, it's a plastic oh. Cerberus. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of I'd really like him to do something like that. Like I'd be I'd, I'd be disappointed if it was uh do you know what would I be disappointed? I don't really care. Like what I would love to see, right, is I would like to see the Mark III and or the Assault Marines, and then I'd like a bombshell, like something like we've heard rumors of what we've heard rumors of the plastic Derrideo. We know on the roadmap there's a mystery army release. Perhaps that could be this. Perhaps it's going to be solar. Perhaps it's going to be demons. Perhaps it's going to be some talons because we know that talons in the there's rules in the book that don't exist. So I hope it will get something truly new. But I'll be excited for whatever we get. Hmm. Uh, Rob, what about you? So I think we shall see. Okay. Um, in on a white background, painted in Sons of Forest colors. Or Imperial Fist Colors. Uh, we shall see uh, the Mark III, exactly so. Yep. I think we'll see a plastic to radio. Um, okay. well, and potentially some uh-huh. sort of new sprue upgrade for the Land Raider. That's what I think. Uh, what I'd like and what I really want to see is um, a silhouette or an actual picture 
or a sneak peek of a new Primark. <clears throat> That's what yeah. I'd really like to see. Yeah. Um, and I think that if we get those things, uh, those four, three or four things, uh, I think that would probably be a, a good one for us. Um, I, I mean, dreaming. Um, mm-hmm. I'd love to see a new um, sneak peek of a campaign book. That's why we really want to see that isn't yeah. based around. Yeah, you're you're fucking high, mate. To be honest with you, I think. Yeah, so we're we're business as far as so that, that's what I'd really like to see. Uh, something that involves the Chateau features. That would be my dream. How about you, Will? Let's go over to you. So, very interesting points from the pair of you there. I there was always those rumours that apparently the next campaign book is ready or it's been to print or whatever. And I'd love the other the next campaign book because I think yeah. Siege of Cathonia. Cathonia. Uh, I think yeah. it was brilliant. It was absolutely marvellous. So another one of them. Yeah, it was fucking good. Right? Yeah. They really knocked it out of part there. I don't I don't think they got anything wrong in that book, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah. On the back of this episode, I'm going to have an absolute hard on for Iron Hands again. So my heart wants Mark Free Plastic, 100%. Yeah, 100%. But I think we're going to get Lorga. Lorga. I think it's time. Ooh. I think Logar is such an old, such an old sc- sculptor. Well. And as we just discussed, what a tiny boy, a little like squat a boy, tiny, yeah. a tiny, a toddler next to. So yeah. I've got him stood here next to uh, Magnus. And if Magnus wanted to, he could tuck Logar's head uh, up under his armpit. Yeah, yeah. Give him a noogie. Yeah, perfect. yeah, exactly. Or just like a child. Like, don't worry, I've got you. Yeah. It's all fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Lorgar's a controversial, controversial choice, but I will get. I reckon we'll get Fulgrim before we get, we'll get Fulgrim. Demon Fulgrim, surely. Demon Fulgrim, I reckon. But yeah. my rationale behind it is, we Lorgar mm. has a second profile of rules, as yeah. does the Khan. Okay, but Fulgrim yeah. doesn't. So no, I mean, so they, so so. They want to flesh them out first. Do we? I, do we want to? Do I we want to? churn this rumour mill up even further. <laughs> yeah, go on. Go on, do so it. I had Green's already heard, thick. Clot it. So um my uh my uncle's uh I think it's uncle's best friend drinks of a guy who often attacks these people around <laughs> Nottingham. Your brother's others he had mother's he had uh, I think he had Andy yeah. Hoare in the back of his cab like a few weeks ago. <laughs> right. Who let slip basically left his laptop on the seat and he opened it up and he said that the next campaign book was going to be siege of terror themed and had fleshed out rules for the legion's presence at terror which include obviously the emperor's children right uh, i mean that what a wild wild story i love it to, i love to, it that's to, amazing to, yeah. uh, which I would make sense for a demon fulgrim right Correct. Uh, I, think so. yeah. I mean yeah. would it be like the Sat- saturnite rule i mean would that be the siege of would it be a oh siege of terror, or would it be called like Saturnine? Would it be as specific as uh, as that? A, 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 Horus Heresy, the Saturnine Gambit. I mean, oh, that would be amazing. Be I'm so in. Good. I'm done. That's it. Oh, so basically, yeah. I mean, we've listed basically everything uh, possible yeah. at Nova, right? And we'll probably only get like two, or one, one reveal. Yeah. Is Nova quite a big event? Uh, it's big. I think it's it's not quite as big as say Adepticon is, but I think yeah. it's probably if you're if you look at. Warhammer Fest being like Champions League, yeah, right, and then maybe, uh, ooh, let's think about this. Adepticon being Premiership, I would say that Nova Open is maybe the Championship Player Final. So I'm it's not quite it's... top tier, yeah. but it's it's kind of it's up there. It's like it's got it's a big deal to a lot a lot of people, right? Yeah, it's also like the most exciting league of them all. Then absolutely, so, precisely. So potentially, this could be the most exciting could league we've ever could be, had. It, could be huge. Well, like I said, we'll we'll know pretty much by the time this comes out just how wrong we are. So don't forget to don't forget to bully us in the comments mercilessly and tell us what a bunch of stupid misguided twats we are. Please do. Yeah, yeah. Heal and grow. Heal and grow. Yeah. Right. So we're going to take a short interlude now. You're going to watch a uh, an advert, and uh, Rob's going to go and refill his puddle water. Um, I might have a wee. I don't know what we're going to do. Not entirely sure what his kind of typical procedure is, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna oil the cogs. I'm gonna plug the cogitators in. I'll just, I'll, I'll just, yeah, I'll just get ready. Cool. Right. Whilst you go and oil yourself up, we'll, uh, we'll be back in a few minutes.
Yes. Lock and uh, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that advert. We certainly did because uh, we got paid for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Ideal. So um, it's finally time to uh, wind up the clockwork Iron Father that is William Henry, and let him loose. <laughs> let him go on the uh, let him go on the irons. Me and me and Rob can just kind of hang back, relax, chip in wherever necessary. But um, yeah. yeah sorry. I, um, can I? Can I just? Can I just? Um... Indeed. Sorry, sorry, John. Before we yeah. go into this mad uh, Tactica Legion review, um, it's been a long time since I remember reading about anything Iron Hats because basically they're in the first like couple of books and then that's it, right? They just basically don't appear again. Yeah. So maybe Will can just give us a brief overview of the Legion doctrine, the home world, where Ferris Manus was found, why he oh, has. What yeah. cracking idea! Um, because uh, many people might not be familiar with with such things, and I know Will is a is an expert in iron, so um, perhaps he can yeah, just yeah. give us a brief brief yeah you know, just a a three minute summary, uh, Will of um, uh, of all things Iron Hands perhaps. Yeah, so the Iron Hands are one of the first legions that were reunited with their Primarch, their Primarch being Ferris Manus. Uh, he's when he was. Um, taken from the emperor's uh pods on in under the himalayas on terra he landed on this pretty desolate and horrible planet called medusa where he was early on into his kind of a uh, gr- growth on 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 the planet he found hard times it was a it was a harsh world harsh conditions with harsh tough people on it as well and part of this as well was early on he he he's famed for having silver hands, for having these mercurial silver coated hands that um that are quite a well, if anything, it goes into the name of the Legion. So he was the third or fourth found, I think. Yeah, very, very distinctive. And very famously he upon landing on this planet and growing up and working out what he was, he fought this 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 great worm, like almost this like dragon called um Azanoff. Mm-hmm. And try to like punch it to death. Try to like get it in a headlock. Just couldn't. So <laughs> like, a, like he... a Hercules Disney cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what he ended up doing in the end was actually drowning it in like um in a lake of lava. And when he drowned it and melted it, it's metal liquid almost, almost like the T one thousand from um Terminator, <laughs> uh, from Terminator two. Yeah, it, also, like yeah, yeah. it like coated his 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 hands right. hence having these like these like silver metal hands mm. and as and as a response to that they galvanized them hugely gave him the name of the legion as well as loads of other functions as well so like vulcan who was a very f- famous um blacksmith and F- fulgrim as well who was great at making awesome weapons and swords they used hammers and they used anvils and they used tools to create these wet amazing weapons mm. but ferris didn't need any of that he just used his hands he would heat the metal bend the metal crush the metal fold the metal he'd do everything he could just with his hands and as a response he made some of the greatest and most beautiful and most powerful weapons w- w- within the whole law in general and then going into the great crusade and being reunited with the emperor he was um he was found very early on so like him russ horace fulgrim vulcan they they're always there by the emperor's side, and mm-hmm. he was he was kind of like Vulcan and kind of like Perturabo to a degree as well. He was I I like to think one one of the scientist generals, right. so he was really clever, really academically clever, understood tech, understood all these awesome things as well. But he was also really headstrong and really like like hot hot headed as well. And what that what that meant for him within the Legion as well was. He encouraged almost dissent and competition amongst the ranks of his men. Interesting. So rather than fathering them nicely and warmly, he he wanted them to come up with different ways to conduct war, different ways to, to fight wars. And he'd almost pit them against each other because he knew it brought the best out of them. And as a result, he created this, this really tough, stern legion that I like to think that they were like a conquering legion. Right. So... They were less like Horace, who was a statesman and would and would win over the enemy before the, the gun was first shot, 
or less like um, Rabute, who were just again like a like a diplomat, a spokesman. He was he was just a cold. Him and his legion were a cold, hard conquerors, and they would come in, they'd crush what they needed, and then they'd bring it bring it into compliance and rolled on. And I think that was reflected yeah. very very that, aptly. That's really interesting. So a, cu- a couple of things just to draw out there. So um, and just to just to add to that. So I, I remember Gilliman, I think, referred to the Iron Hands, but um, particularly Ferris Manus as one of the dauntless yeah. four. He um, was. Yep. So yep. one of the one of his brothers that he could rely on, basically. And with it, like with any one of the dauntless four, Ferris Manus being one of them, yeah, he, he could win any doomsday scenario. It was referred yep. to in Manu Firo. He could, um, he, he could persecute any war. He could yeah. fight any foe, and he always knew he he would come out on top with one of these four, with Ferris and the Iron Hands included. And um, I seem to vaguely remember um, in um, the Fulgrim book where yep. spoiler alert, Isfahan Five means the demise of demise of uh, Ferris Manus. Yeah, um, it, it, I, he seems to have. Um, uh, strategic authority over Vulcan and uh, Korax in that situation. I seem to vaguely remember that basically he's like the more senior of them. Maybe I'm just making that up in my head. We've oh, always yeah, got the yeah. sense that he was he was the, a senior um, uh, figure amongst the uh, amongst the, the the Primarchs as well. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah okay, cool. And how about the doctrines of war? Of the, of, I mean, they're they're cold, hard as iron. These guys, um, you know, part of their clans. But what what's generally their doctrine of uh, doctrine of war? So classically under Ferris, he employed, I think it's even a right of war as well. It's called the head of the Gorgon. So what this yes. was, this was a, a classic kind of hammer and anvil style of warfare where he'd have, they'd, they'd employ the solid tough front line and it would just inexorably march towards and just, and just crush. And then they'd incorporate fast elements as well, armored elements that would then encircle the enemy, right. trap the enemy, draw them in and kind of crush them from all sides. Um, almost almost like that of a fist. You would take yeah. the enemy, you'd put it in your palm, and you'd slowly crush your way onto it, which is that's a really, right. yeah, that's really a, that's cool really... way to so, think about it. So am I right in thinking, right, that kind of each of the elements of the Legion was treated as the, like, part of the cog, as like a gear within exactly. uh, with, uh, within the kind of the, the grinding kind of machine of war, right? So yeah, yeah. you would need to have, you know, they, they did everything pretty well. But everything, all like the legion specialisms, they they weren't really particularly specialist to any one thing. They like they needed the fast attacking elements, they needed the kind of stern elements, they needed the armored elements, and everything was sort of function in tandem in order to kind of create this this kind of like super kind of efficient battlefield machine. Right, that was kind of how, right, yeah, how we viewed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And then what the Iron Hands and what Ferris did very differently to a lot of other legions was rather than rather than having company commanders he had he had clans which were essentially self dependent kind of like chapters almost so almost like the ultramarines had he had mm-hmm. these these clans within the legions which generally they recruited from certain areas of medusa and they specialized in their kind of own own formations of war although they could do anything but then what ferris as i was saying earlier what he also encouraged was he encouraged competition between the clans because he knew if you just if you just if you fell into the same style of warfare time and time again, you wouldn't yeah. ever develop anything else. So just, he'd so they would go and fight and persecute these wars against Xenos and whatever it was, but they'd also have their like almost like their inter inter legion rivalry as well, where right. the yeah. Sorogol clan against the the Raukan clan. And what that meant was they were very independent within the Legion. And they were very self-sufficient when it came to like persecuting wars, but then under Ferris as well, he could he could bring huge elements, huge armies to bear whenever he needed, knowing that they just fit seamlessly, almost like what you were saying, John, about the cog. They'd fit seamlessly into whatever style of warfare they were re- required to bring. Am I and... am I right in saying, Will, that they are the least mauled of all the legions out of this fan fight, or am I, yeah. am I making that up? No, no, you are entirely correct. So one of the really interesting things about East Fan 5 was the Legion as a whole, as we know, spoiler alert, Ferris died to the hands of his his closest brother, Fulgrim, very, very early on. He was the first Primarch to die. But the way that he set his Legion up and the way that he conducted the, the, the wars prior to that 
actually set the Legion in a great position going forward right. because they were all self-sufficient, independent fighting machines. Nice. So, and because, because he was hot headed, because it was his closest brother as well. He took the first company, which were the famed Morlocks of the mm. first company. And he, and he, turned the engines up to 11 and he just went straight to his fan five leaving huge elements of the actual legion behind right. so granted himself and the first legion suffered greatly they lost yeah. to a man or whatever it was yeah. um to say but a lot of the other parts of the legion when they arrived the betrayal was already in full force so right. they suffered a lot less than the raven guard and the iron hands uh, and the salamanders in in casualties and then after that they kind of went their own ways the clans kind of worked independently for a while and they just persecuted this this really efficient guerrilla war against the warmaster and his brothers and his forces interesting and, yeah. and it and it was it was quite efficient it was it was really good it's really interesting as well that in fulgrim as you were saying fulgrim horus sends fulgrim to recruit ferris manus to his mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. and and there's a huge emphasis of Horus wanting Ferris. He's like, I need yeah. Ferris. I, I, I need the Iron Tenth. Yeah. And when Fulgrim returns to um, the Vengeful Spirit, having not recruited Ferris, if anything, just made the situation possibly worse. worse. Yeah. Or Horus is incandescent with rage that you promised yeah. me you were going to bring them to my side. With them, we, we'd be unstoppable, so on and so forth. That's very um, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I know of all of these things, but when you lay it out like that, you know, you've got Gilliman saying he's part of the Dauntless Fall, Horus incandescent with rage that Fulgrim could not bring him to his side. Yeah. Uh, you know, the fact that Horus keeps his skull by his side, you know. Yeah, talks you know, to him, talks to the skull, yeah. yeah. And, you know, one of the I've always thought one of the tragedies of the Iron Hands is that because Ferris Manus because often in uh, and we we're moving off the tactical legion review here, but but one of the classic plot devices that is used within um, the Black Library novels of the Horus Heresy has always been to see your the Legion through the eyes of the Primarch, or yeah. the Primarch being a, a plot device to be able to tell a story. So exactly. Fulgrim, you know, if we just take that one book, you know, everything is basically seen through his eyes or his actions. We we get some scenes where you have Lucius and, and Tarvis or whatever, but, but basically he's the main protagonist. If you think about yeah. Vengeful Spirit, Horus is the main protagonist. You, you have scenes that don't have him in, but everything is, is seen through the lens of, of, of their actions. Whereas Ferris Manus, because he dies in the fifth book in Fulgrim, I think it's I think it's the fifth book. Yeah, it's um, yeah. Uh, you, you essentially don't get a uh, you 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 miss some of that because that book is not is about Fulgrim. Although he appears yeah, a lot yeah. in that book, it's not about him. So you're reliant on the short stories to find out more. But I think that one of the the, the sad things about the Iron Hands, they might have some short stories. The Seventh Serpent, I think it is one. Well, I think yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, and they've got some um, uh, good stories through Graham McNeil's uh, Angel Exterminatus, where you see that guerrilla campaign. You you don't really see the Iron Hands working as a legion as, as you do perhaps in 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 other campaign spheres, which is yeah, um, yeah. which is interesting. But there's such a rich tapestry to the legion um, beyond just being like hard men who were like similar to the death guard in the way exactly, that they just yeah, go yeah, forward yeah. right so um yeah so hopefully we'll be able to do some some justice by yeah, going yeah, to their yeah. rules today right? i think just quickly i think it's really interesting that the iron hands the salamanders and the raven guard i think the three of those legions suffer hugely from a black library perspective from yeah. the way that they're written yeah, in, in in the actual black library books but all three of those legions, if you read the black books, like the first set of black books, even the like Space Marine codexes from third, fourth, fifth, and so on and so forth, 40k, the amount of lore and the amount of information that is actually told about how those legions operate, and the Iron Hands especially, which is why I think they're the ones I love the most, yeah. they are they are so interesting and they're so fascinating. And yeah. a lot of people go, oh, yeah, the Iron Hands, they were idiots. And yeah. because, because the way that they're written, that yeah, it, as you said, Rob, like yeah, like, and... I know me especially when I was first reading the books, reading the Black Library books. I'm 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 turning pages, waiting for like Primarchs to talk yeah. and engage. But actually, once I've grown and 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 learned more, I more want to learn about the Legion as a whole, not yeah. just the dialogue between Rabute and, yeah. and the Lion. Yeah. I, yeah, 
I want individual small characters yeah. and how they feel and how the wars affected them and everything. And yeah. I think the Iron Hands suffer because of that. badly to that writing. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, awesome. Okay, well, let's, should we kick it off then, John, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and, and do this thing? Talk about some rules. That's why we're all here, right? Oh, mama. Oh, mama. And let's be honest, the Iron Hands have got some rules. Good rules, right? So, Pretty hot rules. Yeah. Well, do you want to talk about the Medusa scales? Yeah. So this is their this is their this is their legion trait. So pretty much what it does is if you're not a tank, you're when you shoot them with ranged weapons, your ranged weapons are at minus one strength. Which yeah. I definitely, when I first read this, was like, oh, that's pretty good. But yeah. the more you play the game, the more you realise this this is actually a really solid legion rule. Yeah. Really, really can good. I, can I just interject there, Will, Will, as well? So I often make this mistake of viewing them. And it's I think it's easy if you're an opponent to get in this trap of seeing them as toughness five rather yeah. than your weapons being minus one strength. Yeah. And yeah. I think that it's really critical not to see them as toughness five. Right. Because things like last cannons can still double, double them out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Whereas if you're with the view, oh, they're tough as five, that's not that then you wouldn't be able to double them out. So I think that just getting the mindset you you are minus one strength, not they are plus one toughness, I think. And I I, I can't speak for other people, but I often find myself falling into that trap when, when playing Iron Hands. So uh, yeah, yeah, I I think it's 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 six or one half a dozen of another. It's the same, but it's also not the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. and it's one of them rules that until when you read it on paper, you're like, yeah, that's that's pretty good. But it's when you start playing against it, it's when you start getting that battlefield data against yeah. it that it just it 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 all it. I think it's on the precipice of getting out of hand because yeah. the the real strength of that of that rule specifically is it doesn't really affect how the how the iron hand player plays. It affects right. how their opponent plays. I see. And, okay. Yeah, that's, and, that's good. yeah, and I think yeah. that's why it's such strong rule because, like, I've when I play against Scorpiuses, as an example, um, I almost don't fear them. I'm almost yeah. like, I haven't got to worry about the Scorpius as much as I would if I was playing any other Legion because yeah. it only becomes strength seven. So it does an instant kill my characters. So and, I and get I suppose, feel no pain. Yeah, and it, right. it's always on, right? I mean, that's a good thing. Yeah, you, yeah. You kind of like, exactly. it, I always think with Iron Hands, it's a great, uh, if you're being introduced to the game, it's a great one to have because you don't really need to think about it too much. It's just always on. You know, it's not Blood Angels where you only get it when you charge or whatever, or yeah. every children. You need to get off a charge to be able to to, to be able to make the full of, to make exactly. the most of the people, right? Um, so it's always on. We know it's a shooting edition, yeah. so you know, and there's loads of shooting in, in in this edition, so it will really come into its own. So yeah, yeah. Um, and what's this? Uh, it will not die. Uh, tell us about the it will not die. I think the vehicle so well. Yeah. So if you are a vehicle, if you have the vehicle unit type instead of getting the minus one strength when you're being shot at, you just get a six up, it will not die. So at the end of each of your player turns, for any Rhinos or Kratos or Land Raiders that have taken whole points, roll a dice on a six, get a whole point back. That's pretty nice, right? Yeah, it's it's, all right. It's all right, yeah, yeah. It's 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 almost like an extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's almost ordering a a tiramisu and getting a coffee on the side as well and being like, ooh, Perfect. Yes, excellent. delicious. Yes, um, yeah, it's I just see. a nice little extra thing to it. Um, I don't think it's, I, I, I think as a legion rule, it, mm-hmm. it, it couldn't be front and center, but it's yeah. just, it's just a nice little extra oh, addition that they yeah. provided, which is cool. Petty four, mate, at the end of a delicious meal. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think the other thing to say about your the the minus one strength is that it also applies to dreadnoughts, right? Which yeah, is yes. also, yeah, which is dreadnoughts yeah. anti anti. Cav, anti grav, sorry, cavalry, infantry, the Primarch as well. He hasn't got the tank type, so it affects him as well. So actually, it affects a, a, a oh, very God. large amount of the army. And in an addition, which is very he- shooting heavy, mm. it's it's really good. I think it's I think it's kind of I think it's kind of a strange rule in the fact that it doesn't affect the Iron Hand player. It affects how the opponent plays, and mm. in that sense, I. It, it, it can be a bit annoying like i've had to colombo quite a lot of people when they're like shooting at me and i'm like well actually yeah, actually, yeah. it's fives to wound rather than fours and so yeah. on and so forth yeah. so yeah. interesting um, okay, it's, cool. good. it's good yeah. okay, great. Cool. it does nothing also, in oh, combat 
So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. only okay. it's, uh, it's only for shooting. So you get them in combat and they die like anybody else. They're they? normal. They're just vanilla marines, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool, wonderful stuff. And they can also get Iron Fathers, which are a lovely yeah, little touch, yeah. very these, thematic they, little touch. These are pretty fruity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so what, what also is pretty fruity is uh, the advanced reaction. So we, as we know about advanced reactions, much like Legion traits, uh, some are pretty good, some are pretty trash. I would say this falls in the pretty good camp. Yeah. So essentially, um, the, the the TLDR here is that uh, you're shooting twice, essentially, in a uh, an Overwatch reaction, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep, but uh, they gain the gets hot rule, but you know, whatever. What does that really matter? Yeah. So what's so good about this is is that you're playing a generally speaking a shooting legion. Even though their shooting is not any better than your than their <laughs> opponents, they're more resilient to shooting. So yeah. I think that means they fall as a shooting legion. Yeah. But but what this does is it makes the phase in which they really suffer, which is the assault phase in combat, it makes it even harder to get them into combat. Yeah, that's and, a good point. Yeah, and this, that. yeah, and this, especially when you finally got there, you finally got to their lines and you've weathered this and you've achieved that, and then you charge something and the Iron Hand player goes, I shall Gorgon spite you, and they yeah. shoot a bajillion extra shots at you. It yeah. can be <laughs> so, so hard to deal with and quite demoralizing as well i can imagine so yeah so i mean could i if i'm a um double cyclonic melter lance um leviathan, leviathan. could yeah. i double could, i could basically double tap here but i would get hot right yeah yeah so you shoot 16 melter gun shots <laughs> yeah. which is just, which is nuts right which, which is, is which, nice. which is crazy yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and the phosphate shoots twice as well i've had this a few times so i've had this on 10 volkites where they've shot 100 shots which is insane no, no. Yeah, do you know what yeah. i mean you're gonna lose um, guys but it's probably worth the 100 shots against the it, exactly yeah yeah um lads cannon teams to shoot 20 shots when you charge them immortals that shoot 70 what was that? Uh, 16, 32, 64 Volkite shots and eight yep. Melter gun shots. So you're finally there and you're finally ready to go and you're ready and you're finally ready to, to fuck some mine hands up yeah. and they just shoot you again and again. Yeah. And yeah, it's, I wouldn't say bait, it's got to be, you got to bait out reactions in order to stop you exactly. from, from using yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think, I don't think it's as good as some of the out of sequence advanced reactions. So yep. they're charging, yeah you charge in my turn and things like that but i think it's a really complementary one to to how the legion play and yeah. to the and to the legion rule i think it's i i really, really like it i think it's really good it's got me out of got me out of bad situations many a time Excellent. many a time yeah okay cool yeah i think that you really explained that really well actually i haven't seen the synergy between the fact that it, it's obviously not a close combat buff but mm. this just helps you survive the close combat in a certain situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Unless you got calm, and then you can't Overwatch, so you can't Gorgon Spite. Right. So you just die. So. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It messes you up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you need you need to make sure you've got a uh, a librarian in there to make sure they can't react, right? Oh, that's, yeah, okay. That's, that's also a good one as well. Yeah. 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 Okay, right. So um, they've also got some really cool um, wall of traits as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, of of these, uh, well, where do you where do you see where do you see yourself landing typically? So, I from a analytical. It's guess, also just interesting to know as well. They have got a loyalist and a traitor only. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think yeah. From a um, from a cold cold iron calculated soul, I think the traitor one is the best one per se. Because what it does is it gives you the warlord, as well as the unit he joins, preferred enemy against loyalists. Okay, which, that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. and it's quite rare in this edition to get yeah. preferred enemy. Preferred enemy, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah, yeah. powerful as fuck. Yeah, it's huge in yeah. this edition. Affects combat, affects shooting, really, really good. Yep. Um, and then on top of that as well, it gives the warlord and the unit he's with. It gives them a free reaction, which is pretty cool. Um, yep. Just them. And then what's also cool is cool as well is you can i'm pretty sure that 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 unit can do two reactions it's they can't do the same reaction but in the but same could yeah yeah they could return fire and then shroud as well which is pretty cool 
That's nice. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Hey, here's, here's a quick question for you, uh, Will. From a law perspective, are there ever scenarios where there are iron hands you would deem as traitor, or is it just a case of they potentially come into contact with loyalists so they need to kind of expunge them in order to kind of succeed their task? Yes, I think it's generally speaking i don't think there are traitor iron hands yeah i think on the back of losing your primarch so early on and the keys of hell being unlocked i think there will certainly be instances where the war is the war and the persecution of whatever is in front of us must be achieved and conducted yeah so in, so in this instance it kind of carries itself quite well um because it's just preferred enemy. It's just, it's just, we just need to fight and kill whatever is in front of us. In this instance, it's traitor only, so it's against loyalist legions. Um, but yeah, I think it's all right. I think it's, I've okay. probably yes, paid, definitely. probably paid 15, 20 games as traitor iron hands, and it's a really good wall of trade. It kind of means you build your your HU unit to be your your heavy lifter um, mm -hmm. unit within the army, but it just gives you a lot more usage out of that as well it's good cool. it's good yeah, yeah. Cool. okay so uh from hell's heart as well so this is the loyalist only one so uh a wall with this trait and all models in the unit he joins going fear one uh yeah. which is lovely fear one's good like fear, fear makes like leadership is so much more impactful in this edition than it yeah. has yeah. been previously and the ability to modify that negatively towards your opponent is always going to be viewed upon pretty well uh, should the warlord be reduced to zero wounds, a controlling player may choose to inflict D6 automatic hits upon the unit whose attacks cause the final wound. Uh, with these hits allocated as per the standard rules, each hit is resolved using the profile of either any of the warlord's ranged weapons if he has lost his last wound to a shooting attack, or using the profile of any of the warlord's melee weapons if he has lost his last wound as part of an assault with all hits resolved here in the same profile. Okay. So basically, if you've got a thunder hammer, you can hit back with D6 times with your thunder. Yeah, or if you've Which... got a machinator array, yeah. you can shoot your flamer or your melt gun or... or your melt gun twice yeah. yeah this is also a really interesting one on this one which i've hypo hypothesized many times but haven't had even i haven't had the heart to actually try it <laughs> is if you have a fury of the ancients uh contempt of prime like yeah like super one and you give him this warlord trait and he has something like a gravis las cannon which yeah. shoots twice yeah it shoots d6 times so mm -hmm. it's it's uh, heavy two on, on the profile. So yeah. if you if you and you roll a three, it shoots automatically six laser cannon shots. Oh, at, I see what you're saying. At, yeah. At, yeah. At, at, at what removed you? Yeah. So so potentially, if you've got shooting weapons within on the character that dies, it can it can do quite a lot of oh, damage sure. from combat or from range as well. Um, and I I really like this. I've been using this quite a lot recently, um, because I've actually found it. The fear is good, good on its own. Yeah, but it's, but it's a really good like, like, uh, like, like a Columbo, as I like yeah. to call it. When you're like, oh no, you killed my warlord, but I'm going to hit you <laughs> four yeah. times with more, my thunder hammer. One more, one yeah. more thing before I remove my. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Before, yeah, just, uh, just one more thing before I go. <laughs> yeah. Please, sir, take six machinery array shots. My yeah, own, yeah, or yeah. six as clubs a, with my thunder hammer. As a comparison. Um, you know, the uh, the first, the Loyalists, I can't remember if it's the Loyalists or Traitor or just generic, but the, one of the Blood Angels ones, you you gain fear, but you have to earn it first. You've got to kill a unit and sweep yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. then you gain yeah. fear one and then it stacks. Whereas this one, you just have fear one, right? And it's then just you fear, have, baby. And yeah. then you have the additional hits as well. This one tends to be the one that I've played uh, uh, before. Uh, most yeah. people seem to go for this one, you know, on, on an iron father, yeah. you know, as you say, well, you get four, you know, you roll a D6, you get four hits. Uh, then you've got uh, potentially uh, eight wounds. In fact, you have got eight wounds to save, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So automatic, Aut automatic, Aut hits, right? automatic hits, but not wounds. Wounds. Okay. So you roll off the wounds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're likely to get most of them through. Um, yeah. But, you know, on the Thunder Hammer, this would be pretty, this is going to, this could take down your opponent's warlord if they're if they're fighting yeah, together yeah, even, yeah, if, even yeah. if you die right so yeah a really uh a really strong one yeah i think this one's really cool as well because it is quite iron handy it's yeah. like i'm gonna die today and whatever so happens yeah. i'm gonna take <laughs> yeah, so I'm, you I, i'm gonna take you with me i'm gonna open up yeah. that switch i'm gonna press the big red button and we're all gonna die yeah perfect so, yeah. yeah it's good okay, and what about silver iron will what's what's going on with that rob do you want to go through this one yeah so 
Um, Warlord, with his traits and all models in any unit, is joined are never affected by any special rule or effect that lowers a characteristic, including the fear and rad phase special rules. And due to losing assault, where the enemy has inflicted more wounds, so that is interesting. Not being affected by rad phage is quite interesting. Does that would um? Oh yeah, okay. In addition, an army of Warlord has this trait may not make reactions during the movement phase, but may make an additional reaction in either one of the opposing shooting or assault phases, but not both. That's good that it gives you a bit of flexibility. Yeah. If the Warlord is removed as casualty, then this additional reaction is lost. Yeah, it's all right. I I guess that you could pair it with some particular units and it might be useful, but I could just see just from a house heart. Uh, Either of the other two, right. Just, yeah. just being pretty good. I mean, if Silver Iron Will was just any body legion tra- like water track, you'd be like, oh, well, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. But yeah. when yeah. compared to From Hell's Heart and the Eye of Vigilance, I think that those two would be the the no-brainers for taking one of those two is probably um, best. Unless I'm wrong, Will, I mean, is there a certain situation well, that you think? Yeah, I think, I think generally the basic never having a characteristic lowered is, is pretty awesome. So, like, you're not slowed by dangerous terrain. You can't be blinded. You yeah. can't be rad grenaded. There's there's actually quite a lot of characteristics that yeah. can't ever be lowered. Can't be concussed. Which can't be concussed, which is actually yeah. pretty great. But the Wait, problem yeah. about this one is you can't make reactions in the movement phase. Yes, yeah, so it's on slow. Yeah, and I think that's why you generally don't see this that much because movement movement phase reactions along with shooting phase reactions are or, along with all reactions actually are really really yeah. a, a really important part of the game. Yeah. And I think what this one does is it is it kind of stops you playing that element of the game. Yeah. Um, and I think as as a player, I think it's really healthy to try and engage in every phase of the game. Yeah. But this you, this stops, stops, you, stops you doing it. And I'd like to see it maybe potentially adjusted so that maybe you couldn't just do the basic two ones. Like you couldn't advance or withdraw, but you could still do interceptors or things like that. Yeah. Um, Because I think currently it just suffers a bit. Interesting enough, though, no, uh, Early on, this was actually FAQ'd. This one was. So oh, right. One of the early second ed FAQs, this was FAQ'd because. And, and yeah, it was, wounds, wounds was viewed as one, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Yes. Yeah, so uh, some people were taking it as literally one cannot oh, have their characteristics God. lowered. And and a wound is a characteristic. So <laughs> people, <laughs> it's an invincible unit, basically. Yeah. So people were obviously playing it as well. Fucking you can't people, lower my right? Wounds. You can't trust people. People are the absolute worst. That is unreal, it's, but yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. So, it's classic so, as if rules was written against rules as intent. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Slugs. Yeah. They've also got some pretty interesting. Um, I think. I think the one thing that we're going to come across here, right, is the fact that there's kind of nothing that you look at and think this is actually a bit of shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, again, uh, Wall of Traits. Not Wall of Traits, the other one. Rights of War. Rights of War. Yeah. Rouse. Rose. Um, so these have kind of ported over quite nicely from the first edition, right, Will? These were kind yeah, of pretty these much. Be, these yeah. be familiar to long-term Iron Hand players. But, yeah, yeah. Um, Company Bitter Iron. Is that what you tend to use largely, would you say? Or are you a bit of a... So early on into second edition, I was a huge fan of Head of the Gorgon. I am actually to this day still a huge fan of of Head of the Gorgon. But I think a lot of new players and a lot of even even revised players coming from first edition into second edition, not that there were many Iron Hand players in first edition. No, there are now. They were few and far between. A lot of people now, I think, gravitate towards um, yeah. Company of Bitter Iron because it makes one of their one of their good units, um, the three point six Rogan unit. I think it takes them up to multiples of absolute madness, and yes, and it really exemplifies the Legion as a whole, where they are tough and staunch, and they just exist. They yeah, do not die. You... They do not move. They just, just unkillable fucking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, horrors aren't they so yeah. what, what's the biggest thing about this rather war then will that the, turns us up to 11 yeah so this makes the medusan immortal squads um it m- makes them troops which is great i mean any right of war that makes an elite unit troops in especially in a game where and, it, and not only that so an elite unit that you're likely to take anyway right 100 percent. yeah yeah but <laughs> troops is tasty but do you know what we're throwing a bit of line and a bit of heart of the Legion as well. And that's what really makes them yeah, yeah, total yeah. murderers, right? Absolute crazy. So they, when we get to their unit, they they have Feel No Pain inbuilt, which is pretty cool. Yep. So the fact that you can't take their Feel No Pain away 
for yep. killing an apothecary or whatever. And in this one, then they they are scoring when they get on objectives. So they want to be pushing for objectives, getting on yep. them, getting on them, holding them, and then getting Heart of the Legion as well. So you get an improved feel no pain as well for being on an objective and scoring it as if it was like a scoring game. It's 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 deceptively good. Please and then I'd yeah. say these are they're also some of the best models. The four Oh yeah, the, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, look yeah. brilliant. And you can Extra. take them to score to 20. 20. Yeah. 20 of these little boys as well. And they can all take an interesting weapon. Mm, they can all, all got a boarding shield. Yeah, yeah. They're just they're yeah, they're really good breaches essentially. Um, yeah. like and being... also they also gain hatred traitors. Yeah, so this is the one that I I definitely slept on for a long time. So in a legion where you kind of want to be shooting or keeping mm. people at arm lengths, at arm's length so you can shoot them, this gives you a real tasty little treat when it comes to combat. So if you if any iron hands using this rifle have the bitter duty special rule, they get hatred, hatred traitors, which in combat is absolutely marvelous. And then the extra spicing on top is that you can give the bitter duty rule to independent characters for no additional points cost. Yeah, so that's up... quite unusual to be able to yeah, do that. Really, you know, if really, you're a, really rare. Yeah. If you're a world eaters player, you've got to pay for um the ravening bad that madman, I think you've got to pay yeah, for yeah. The, to be able to get that. So yeah, yeah. That, that and, is very, very good. Yeah. And guys, man, honestly, it's yeah. just ridiculous. And it opens up a lot of options that others would uh, other legions wouldn't ever have. So you can put um, Cognis Signums on Marsha Signals or on Armistosses in the Bitter Duty units to, to, to help them hit on twos. So you, yeah. could have, you could have destroyers with uh, Combi Disintegrators, whatever they're called. You can, yeah. you can make them more, be as far. Or Moritats yeah. with this unit. Moritats as well. So, And then you can get these little extra small buffs into these units to make them to make them not only exist yeah. really, really well, but also hit like an absolute truck when it comes to combat and, and even shooting as well. Spoiler alert, more on the more attack later. Uh, so, uh, so limitations are this right of war may only be used uh, in an army that has loyalist allegiance. Yep. Whatever. And yep. Uh, you can't take fresh manners because that's what's made them bitter. Because <laughs> yeah. that boy getting his head snipped off. Well, that's what's made these guys good. That's what caused it. So yeah. I, I will say that often, I mean, most of the events we play in the UK are, are primark primark less yeah. uh, because of the restrictions. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, yeah. I mean, you can see why if you're an Ironhands player, not only is the le Legion right good, but it also just leans into that whole thing yeah, of, yeah. it's quite a themed list. You know, you've got cool models. The models are quite are really, really hardy. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's got, it's got everything. Uh, everything about it. Um, I played um, uh, Phil, uh, you know, against his list, company a bit around, and he took three 10 man squads. Would you tend to do two small squads, one large squad? Will you know how, how big would you make your squads in a list like it, this? And do I have quite... to take these as a troop choice, or can I take a um, as my two compulsories, or do, can I take one tactical and one of these as well? Yeah, yeah, so. It is not compulsory at all. You you could run this right of war and not even take any immortals if you wanted. Um, that's, <laughs> that's completely optional as well. They are just when you take them, they become troops, line, and gain some extra rules, which is okay. which is cool. But I I personally I I like to run them um, a single big 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 block of twenty personally, and I like to put characters in them, and I like that that to kind of be my anvil. And then all the other elements I have around it kind of support and help and kind of like channel the channel enemies in towards them. But then I've also had a lot of luck running like two 15 man squads with mm. um, some like characters in as well. Yeah. But then I've also had running t like three 10 man squads in like land raiders. Yeah. What's cool. What's cool about immortals when we uh, get to it next is they can take uh, Proteus's as telecate transports. Okay. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. that's brilliant. So loads of flexibility. No, Which yeah. also ties in beautifully what, to the whole to the whole armor's guys... element of yeah. of the Iron Hands. Which is can't cool. these guys do what don't fucking toys don't they get? Yeah. <laughs> um, right, and also head of the Gorgon as well. Another right of war that survived the culling uh, from one point oh to two point oh. Yep. So um, effects are uh, all models with the infantry infantry unit type in the detachment is right of war getting a stubborn special rule while in their own deployment zone. Pretty good. Great, great, nice 
passive, easy rule. Yeah. Um, with night fighting and leadership being generally lowered across the board, just yeah. having everything early doors in in your in, in your deployment zone being yeah. stubborn is absolutely marvelous. So. Absolutely. Uh, so any model with the infantry unit type with flamers, so typically it's gonna be like support squads, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few Can others chain, here and there. Yeah. yeah, but largely support squads. The, the seldom seen support squad, I must admit. Um, yeah. But maybe not in an iron hands list because you can exchange them for graviton guns or graviton shredders for fifteen points a model. We'll come on to the graviton shredder in a little while. Yeah. But safe to say, spicy. Safe to say. Uh, Castellax, uh, maybe such as a leech choice in the detachment using this right of war. All models in the unit gain it will not die five up special rule and no additional points costs. Uh, they don't gain Legion Astartes um, rules or any of its benefits. But yeah. I mean, are you ever going to bother Castellax? Line Castellax a, a bit. Yeah. Mis- it's certainly cool. You can take it's like taking Brethren of Iron, but not lo- not leaning heavily in, into mech. Yeah. It just means you can just sprinkle some Castellax in. If you have a, a Forge Lord as well, you could take some Thalax as well, which, which would be pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh- and yeah. the real, uh, you can take an Ifather or a Tech Marine, can take a Cortex control in order to control those Castellax. But the, the real, the real yeah. kicker here as well, right, is that any model with the vehicle units type in a detachment using this right of war gains the out flank special rule. And yes, 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 yes. So this is this is this and stubborn are why I, are why I like this. Um, yep. Why I like this right of war, being able to outflank tanks. W- Assault tanks, uh, troop carrier tanks, even even offensive battle tanks, I think is a really nice little addition that actually mm. helps how this right of war plays quite well. So being stubborn in, in your deployment zone, you generally want to build quite a defensive gun line-esque army, but this just gives you a lot more mobility and flexibility of how you want to play depending on the mission. So if, if you're playing like home and away objectives where you need to score the your objective, but it's in your opponent's t- t- deployment zone yeah this this gives you a good chance to get your your tactical marines and rhinos out to those objectives without having to fight through the enemies coming at you yeah um i like it i think it's good yeah yeah i i, I don't think it's broken in like any way i think it's, I, I think i think this, I think is, this is a nice good, this is a good one yeah, really like yeah, this good i like this um can i, can so, I just confirm that yeah. if i took a cerberus in the lord of war detachment i would be unable to outflank because it's not in the primary detachment. It's actually in a Lord of War detachment in and of itself. Would I, I be think right? Are, I think you are correct. Yeah. Correct, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, because Rice of War only applies to the primary detachment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so you can only take a single fast attack choice. So that's your three jabs. Yeah, it's your three jabs. <laughs> triple, or some, triple, or, or some triple jabs. Or Proteus, right? Or Proteus uh, land speed as well. Yeah. 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 Sorry for pattern spinners. Uh and interestingly, an army in which uh, in which any detachment is using this right of war may not attempt to seize initiative. So even if it's been used as a, an allied detachment, there's no yeah. seizing. Yeah. I I kind of like this because um you imagine like like how this right of war is portrayed and how the style of the Iron Hands, how their yeah. how their how their way of war they conducted it using this style of warfare if you've got like tanks at like encircling you and outflanking you, you're probably going to know that they're coming towards you. So yeah. you're probably going to dig in, get your heels done, get your, your mags loaded. You, you're not going to be taken by surprise by them. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, as, uh, yeah. Yeah. And as a response, it, it means you, you, you kind of build your list to not bother season. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I fucking hate season. The initiative is a rule anyway. I think only shenanigans based army should have it really, to be honest, but there you go. That's my yeah, yeah. two penneth worth. Yep. Yeah, uh, and then we've got some additional addendums to the standard armory as well. So uh, the big one being the uh, access to the iron father. Yeah, well, yeah. do you take an iron father regularly? So I've, so if I'm running head of the Gorgon, I take a yeah. delegatus. If I'm running iron, if I'm running company of, Bitter iron, I take an iron father. Um, okay. This is a, again, this is a really thematic um, option for them. I think what's very interesting about the Iron Hands as a legion is they've only got three units per se. They've got their two unique units and their Primarch, but within their, within the armory of the Keys of Hell, it actually gives them more unit types, weirdly. So just yeah. like the, just like the Iron Warriors, where you get the Warsmith, the Iron Hands get the Iron Father, which is. Yep. A Praetor, which is specialised a bit. Yeah. Um, 
And I think this is a really I think, I think it's a shame that there aren't more of these, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. Like, okay. I'd like to see a, a bit more of it. I think it's a nice way of adding flavor. And also, it's, it's kind of a, what I really like about like the Iron Warriors Warsmith or the Iron Father, or even to really boil it down, like Thousand Sons pray towards becoming librarians. I think it yeah. gives you the ability to build your own characters. It gives Definitely. them something that differentiates yeah. them from the other legions, yeah. but without needing to rely on not rely but you know having to have a special character you can kind of oh this is my iron father fucking hades the fourth or whatever it is and yeah. this is this is why he's different from just a thunder hammer wielding regular mook praetor yeah. Yeah. um so essentially he's 65 points so he's a, a chunky upgrade but i think when we look at the war gear he he does feel worth it he gets quite a lot for that 65 points, strangely. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So he gains Battlesmith 3, which is always useful. I mean, I think Pretty it's... Tasty. Yeah. I think it often gets forgotten, but it's very thematic. And and Battlesmith 3 is way better than most of the other... Uh, like like the Warsmith, for instance, gets Battlesmith 4 or 5 up, I think. So okay. yeah. uh, feeling no pain 5 up, which on a character where you're investing heavy points, just getting that built in is huge. Nuts. Yeah, yeah. He gains a Machinator array. Mm. And he gets a fucking cyber familiar. So cyber yeah. familiar is uh, any model with the infantry unit type, the character unit subtype, and the legion starties. Iron hand special rule may take a cyber familiar for twenty points. And what does that give you, Will? So what this does is it means you can re-roll characteristic checks. So like if someone shoots you with a conversion beamer yep. and you get blinded, ha! Huh, but wait, I'll re-roll. Oh look, I passed, which yeah. is pretty tasty as it is. Yeah. But what it also does is it improves your invulnerable save by one. So so this makes this gives the Iron Hands access. I think it's three legions have access to three the plus invulnerables yeah. on units and characters, which I used to think is a three up that much better than a four up? <laughs> oh, yes. whoa, it out, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, whoa, it is. And the fact that it's just characters and not independent characters is amazing. So you can put it on your cataphracty sergeants. You can give them three ups. You know what I mean? You can put it on your breacher sergeants. So, so they've got four ups. You can put it on your, on your uh, cataphracty forge Lord to give him a three up. It's, it's really, really tasty. And in conjunction with the iron fiber as well, being a praetor, you've got, if, if he's in cataphracty or if he's an artifice, so he's got a three up involved. He's an iron hand. So all your shootings minus one strength to wound him. He's got a feel no pain as well. You've got a dreadnought walking alongside you, marching up. You can just fix him while 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 you go, and you've got extra guns and extra combat crawl attacks as well, paired together. Yeah, it's a bargain sort of, for sixty five yeah, points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Pretty good. Uh, and the last thing is blessed auto simulacra. So. Uh, any model with a vehicle unit type and the legion owners have started iron hand special rule may be upgraded to have the it will not die six up special rule. Yeah. For ten cool. Yeah, yeah. This also increases existing it will not dies by one. So... Oh right. Oh, okay. So mm. but that means because they obviously gain the six up, it will not die anyway. Correct. So yeah, so all yep. Iron Hands tanks just, just have an inbuilt passive six up, it will not a, die. A five up is but mm. but just for ten points, you're just gonna buy it. I mean, yeah. like a five up to regain a whole point is just fucking tremendous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it almost will definitely work in a game yeah. a couple of times. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so good. I um, mean, I've got to say, I mean, I've not looked at the Iron Hands list really in great detail. Um, and when we come to the special units, it's not like they've got the same range that say Sons of Forest and Pure Fist does. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, it, it just it really does shit all over. Um, uh, a lot st- of legions, uh, Salamanders, right? You know, for as just as an example, as a shout yeah. legion. You know, they have access to so many decent things that stack on top of one another um, through their Wall of Trace, through their Rights of War, through their, their Legion rule. You know, you can just tell this is a, a really hardy, survivable Legion to play, which is why I think it's such a great, if you're it getting, uh, want to play Horus Heresy, I think this is why it's such a good Legion because, you you know, it's just survivable that you're probably not going to lose units every you know, every, every five minutes where you play. So, yeah, yeah, very, really, really good, really strong. Okay. Cool. And then they've got, also got their own type of Terminator armor. <laughs> why not? I mean, they, yeah, they've, why got, not, right? they've got all this other gear. Let's just give them their own pattern <laughs> of Terminator yeah. armor as well. Yeah. So, um, Gorgon Terminator armor confers a two up invulnerable save, sorry, a two up armor save, a five up invulnerable save, and the Fear No Pain five plus special rule. Yeah. So, just on itself, getting 
a free, what well, not a free, but getting the feel no pain without having to take an apothecary or a primus or whatever it is, is pretty tasty. Um, and then yeah. the fact that you can then take a cyber familiar. Cyber familiar, I was going to say. So basically, on the previous like, page, it's similar yeah. to cataphracty with a, with a film no pain. A two up, three up, five up is absolutely wild. So oh, let's not beat around that bush, right? Yeah. Um, additionally, the end of any phase in which uh, a model with Gorgon Terminator must pass at least one armor save or invulnerable save, roll a d6 on a result of four up. All enemy units with at least one model within six inches of the model with Gorgon Terminator armor must test as if they've been hit by a weapon with the blind special roll. Yeah. Right. Any this unit is... that is composed entirely of models with Gorgon Terminator armor and immune to this effect. This is interesting. Okay. Yeah, so... can I... I, I want to ask this question right. here, Will. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. Um, you know, this specifically says any Legion, Cataphractic Praetor, or Cataphractic Century. Um, so, can an Iron Father, because an Iron Father is a specific thing, yep. can an Iron Father take Gorgon Terminator out? If he wanted to, I believe he could, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, is it, do you think, because basically, you know, with a normal uh, Castrated Praetor, what you're basically losing is the potential to gain a three up, yep. uh, in one save, but you're gaining the probability of blinding surrounding units, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Do you think that that is a that is worth uh, worth it, or do you think it's probably better just to go with a normal Castrated suit with a side familiar or the Gorgon Terminator and have a slightly less yeah, a slightly worse uh, invulnerable yeah. side. What's your thoughts? I think it's I think it's certainly cool and it's certainly unique. I think the problem with this one is it's a bit of a throwback to first edition. Right. So I don't think they've really the only real change from first edition it, to this one specifically is that it it can only affect um, enemy models. Previously, it, it could affect yourself, anybody. That, yeah, that, yeah, that was the thing, right? Which was which was crazy. Um, but it's quite a nice thing to have i suppose um yeah. i've had it happen a few times there's a couple of ways like when we get to the terminators that have this armor specifically there's a couple of really i think quite nuanced and cool ways that you can make it effective and you can use it to your advantage yeah. um i personally i'd like my characters having three ups and or being yeah. iron fathers so yeah. i i would have gorgons as a unit with those characters inside because yeah. they can't be blinded anymore it's yeah. only enemies um yeah so yeah it's it's interesting. It's cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah it's that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, we uh, touched on these very briefly earlier, but my, why might you want to take a graviton shredder? Yeah. So these are so grav guns are a bit of a an and uh, iron handy weapon. Yep. So when Ferris worked alongside the Mechanicum, he developed a more refined and a more unique way of using these graviton based weapons so what he did was he implemented shredders and pistols shredders are essentially graviton shotguns that's kind of the way i like to describe them to the people that i'm playing it's a two shot 12 inch range graviton profile weapon um but it doesn't do dangerous terrains it's just like solid graviton munitions which is pretty cool um these these within one of the rights of war especially uh they're quite expensive um because you you have to um you have to buy the graviton gun and then upgrade yep. it to a shredder. A shredder. Yeah, but in head of the gorgon, it's just a, str a, sh a straight swap, so you save five points, which is cool. And you can put them on like support squads, so you can have whole support squads in rhinos outflanking with graviton shredders, just hunting vehicles, right? It's just pretty, popping out nuking yeah. a vehicle for you know taking out reliably taking out a four hundred point vehicle for two hundred points. Exactly. I think yeah. the benefit of as well with that is that I often feel with if you've got a melter support squad you you feel like uh oh, five isn't going to be enough you can take five but five is never sometimes you no. just get lucky whereas if you take five of these guys you get two shots piece you get 10 yeah, eight, yeah. Five, uh which yeah. is going to basically it's just going to wreck a spot right it's just yeah gonna yeah spartans kratos is yeah. anything whatever really. whatever this yeah. bit of that yeah. Um, and Pretty then obviously the, pit, the the humble graviton pistols. This is typically going to be found on one variant of a particular uh, yeah yes. that will come to shortly, right? Yeah. So, so this is just a, a pistol, a one shot pistol grab weapon with twelve inch range. Exactly. So, but when it becomes ape shit, is in the hands of a, a moritat or the fabled iron hand term the gravitat. Yeah. So <laughs> why is that will? 
Yeah, so and I've I've used this extensively, and it is. I've been on the receiving end of this. <laughs> <And> it's <laughs> it's fucking awful. So Morissettes have this pretty awesome rule called chain fire, so they can shoot their guns X amount of times. Yep. Um, and then there's restrictions within it. So if you've got gets hot, you have to roll for the shots individually. And as soon as the gun gets hot that you, you shoot, stop. that chain fire stops. Yeah. If you don't have gets hot, you just automatically shoot twelve shots. So Iron Hand Moritats with two graviton pistols, the gravitats, they just whenever they shoot, not as a not as part of a reaction, so an interceptor mm-hmm. or, or 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 an overwatch or whatever it is, they just automatically shoot twelve shots, yeah. which is pretty insane. I um, I can see that being uh erotic or fact. Um I, I can see that gaming in that scenario that gets hot for uh, in, yeah, in a fucking yeah. reckon. Yeah, because it is it's, mental. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. You've you've got a pretty good chance of just killing a dread outright. Oh yeah, I mean? 100%, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like tanks as well, especially like the fact that sixes on haywire now just ignore involve oh, armor damage mitigation, all that stuff. It's just a wound automatically is pretty insane. Yeah. And then as and and then as well, it's got concussive. So even even if even if, if you're about to charge into just a general mm-hmm. unit. You can shoot these, concuss them. Maybe your warlord's got Hell's Heart, so he's got Fear One as well. So they're another leadership down, which is pretty cool. Mm. You can, you can, you can almost lend into those rules of it even further. And then you can have like, like I've I've run um uh, five man outflanking recon teams with melter bombs, and the sergeant's got a graviton pistol as well. So before they charge into the land raiders or the scorpiuses, he just pops off an extra hole point for free. Do you know what I mean? Boom, mm. tasty. Lovely, delicious, and then they can charge in and stuff as well. It's what, it's, what we're learning here, right? Yeah. Is that the iron hands are strong, and then they've got interesting, strong synergies on top of the strength, right? Yeah, and cool war gear, and really cool war gear. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that the the legion iron hand rule benefits dreadnoughts. So generally speaking, they've got the the the, the toughest dreadnoughts in the game, and then they've also got the ability to to kill dreadnoughts better than anybody else in the game. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting, isn't that? Yeah, kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, fucking hell. Armatus uh, Necrotechnica. What's uh, what's this all about, Will? Anything, uh, anything worth doing here? Yeah. So this, I haven't got around to trying this yet, but I've had a couple of ideas. I've been chatting to Ian about this a fair few times. Yeah, so, right. so this was a. Uh, this is if you remember in first edition, I think it was book seven or eight released like anti demon weapons. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really unique, bespoke, rare, like horrible pieces of war gear and weaponry. And this is one of them. So what this does is it essentially when you can upgrade it onto vehicles of any type except flyers, which is pr- pretty cool. So I think even super heavy still have the vehicle type, so you can put it on that as well. And what it does is when an enemy or friendly, when a model dies within six inches of it, you roll a dice and on a six, the tank gains a whole point. So essentially what it's doing is it's sucking the souls out of the individuals that die around it and f- focusing it back into the engines and back into the armor plating and it's and it's re- and it's regenerating the armor around it. It's Plus very, it causes fear basically as well. Yeah, yeah. It's very situational, which is pretty cool. Um, but what it also does is one of those which is one of the what one of the things why I think it's a really potentially interesting bit of kit is it also makes friendly and enemy units within six inches minus one leadership that affects stubborn as well. So it's the only thing in the game that actually take does something to stubborn or except telepathy, but that is, but that's another here, not there. So what you could do, which is what, 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 what one of the things I was thinking was you could put this on a fast tank, like a saber, which I think a yep. movement 16 and they're also fast. So they can flat out 32 inches and then you could have you could have this tank shock units turn one like like off the rip, and it could be dark out for another minus one leadership. It then could be stubborn, but it, it it it's a minus one leadership on top of that as well. So you could do some really cool and interesting things with it. I haven't I haven't really tried this out properly yet. Um, the weird so thing about the iron hands it's, is it's quite expensive. Point fifty points though. I think expensive. it's an expensive, expensive. Uh, for 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 that. Yeah, because you, yeah. you're not going to get it off very often to get its whole point exactly. back. Um, yeah. But yeah, fifty points is expensive. It's, it's 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 very you know sort of dabbling in arcane technologies that they shouldn't probably be dabbling in. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's just yeah, so, yeah. 
<laughs> I do like things that just roll around giving people the fear, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> puts the fear into everything. Yeah. Okay, people of people. Speaking of people who aren't afraid of very much, um, here he is, the big the third, G himself, the big G himself, yeah, the son of Medusa, yeah. the Gorgon. Mm. Right. Let's it's, let's let's not beat around the bush here. This guy belongs very near the top of the totem pole for Primarchs, right? Yeah. So I think he's I think he's top three Rushmore. Easy, him, easy. Yeah. Um, I think it's a case is... of at, at which step of the podium he stood on, right? Correct. Yeah, I think this guy is. It's pretty crazy to think that he's that it, that he's this kind of good now. Um, yeah. When he was when he was he was okay in first edition, but in in this edition, this guy is absolutely crazy. Um, do you guys want to start? Where do you want to go? Well, I mean, we'll start with his profile, right? So the standout things are the six attacks and his weapon skill seven, strength seven, and toughness seven. Yeah. So yeah, he's one of the six as well. And so he's six, fast. yes. Yeah. He's, he's one of the one of the better Primarchs on kind of pure stats alone. Yeah. But it's when we get into his uh so again, we, we sort of had this debate when we talked in the previous show about whether Primarchs are like uh dick kicking fighters or force multipliers. Yeah. And he's sort of pretty good as both, yeah. to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean that I think that's again what separates him. So um he uh is composed of one single ferris manus as a unit um but he has uh some top tier war gear so he's got the medusa carapace he's got a servo on which is worth bearing in mind when we talk about yeah. uh attacking um he's also got forge breaker and he's way better at using forge breaker than that absolute chump per robo oh, is. yeah yeah per robo needs to get back in the gym stop yeah. 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 Um he's got a master crafted plasma blaster, which is fucking lovely to say. Tasty. Love it. Um yeah. he's got a master crafted graviton shredder. We've discussed how good that is already. Perfect. He's also a heavy flamer, so um his machinator array is pretty special. Yeah. He's got a grenade harness. He's got Battlesmith 2 up. He's got Firing Protocols 3, which is really good considering that other Primarchs, such as Perturabo, lost their firing protocols in yeah. the last pack very weird mm. um and he obviously has the sire of the iron hands so um uh, when we talk about force multiplication right and again without really having to kind of get too technical about how it's a force multiply it's just a baked in good rule and that yeah. good rule is that uh all models with both the unit infantry type and the legion starts iron hand special rule in the same army as ferris manus gain the feel no pain six up special rule uh, note this does not stack with other versions of the same special rule and models that already have a better version of the special rule may either use one or the other but still whatever yeah um and if you're a vehicle you get anyone to die five plus as opposed pretty to tasty. six up. pretty yeah, yeah. tasty uh in addition uh an army with ferris manus gains additional reaction in the opposing players assault phase which is also good considering that as you said assault phase reactions are are pretty hot to trot for um, I'm just going to make an observation, less about the feel no pain, uh, because I think that although it, it's it's pretty good as standard, but the fact that it doesn't stack is kind of it's just a bit like well, okay, fine, whatever. It, it's around the the it will not die in the vehicle. So as we saw, yeah, you could buy also similar Acura to get that five up. It will not die, and every vehicle that you buy that on is ten points, right? Yeah. Whereas basically, so Ferris Manus is four hundred sixty five points, but if you have eight um you know vehicles in your army you've essentially got 80 points of upgrades for free with ferris manus yeah uh which i think when you think about it there's probably not that many primarchs that do such a thing um and you could really lean into this but i mean when you just say that you know you're just like okay well now my rhinos have it and i just have it free like i yeah, didn't have yeah. to buy yeah. it you know my and you know if you had a tank heavy list uh, you know, the more tanks you have, the more uh, efficient that this then becomes, which is quite a scary prospect, I think. You know, it's like 465 and then in brackets is like plus these other points that you'll save, you know, um, which is very, very interesting. And with those points you save, yeah. you can buy a, a, a Gravitat, right? You know, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who's no nice slouch? Uh, right. So he's got two up, saving a frip and vulnerable. It's pretty standard. Nice and but simple. What what isn't standard is uh, 
This is nuts, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Right yeah. yeah. So uh, we have we have other Primarchs, right, who have hard-hitting weaponry capable of causing immense destruction upon their foes. But what we don't often have is other Primarchs who have immense weaponry causing destruction upon their foes that strike at initiative. Yeah, which oh. is the which is the craziest thing about it. The fact that it's at initiative and it's AP1 and yep. it's 12, which is yep. Yep. obscene. And, and then as well, brutal free. Brutal <laughs> free. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, that. that's that's where 365 of your 465 points have gone right there. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, he's, and, he's got, unreal. and he's got six attacks base plus the free attack for having the servo on, which you can just yep. poke someone in the eye with. And then you get the extra attack for charging as well. His weapon's got seven, so he's pr- he's pretty good at. I'm right thinking stuff, right as well. The servo arm you can choose to attack with whichever weapon you like as part of the servo. No, no, I've lied. That's a machine arrow. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Yeah, so you could put your attacks into the servo arm. So if yeah. you were inclined, yes, you could, put, you could put your forge breaker attacks into the servo arm. But why would you? Because that that mm-hmm. would be make you certifiably insane. <laughs> Absolutely off your trot, crazy. Yeah. So, um, um, really, the only way to win against Ferris is to to have somebody who has a higher weapon skill than him right because Perfect. you're going to really it's because you you're not going to survive uh in, in the battle to wound because he's going to wound you and you've got so yeah. many saves you're going to make you're going to hope that you survive in the battle on the weapon skills and yeah. that's getting him to hit you on the fives that's the thing that you're you're hoping for i guess is that would, would I be right is that the right assessment there well yeah. do you think You've pretty much got it spot on. So the way that how Primarchs fight now is you can um uh you can I, they they essentially always have precision shot and precision strike. Yeah. So so where his real strength is is when he's swinging into a unit, but then al- allocating attacks out of the unit into certain characters or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So the best way to stop him doing that is get him in a challenge. And if you're weapon skill eight or even weapon skill seven, you're just going to, re- you're going to reduce the number of hits he then gets and can then allocate vastly. Yeah. So yeah. the so best who, way to fight him is to, who are the weapon skill weapon. eight traitor primarchs? Fulgrim? That's, oh, traitor primarchs. Oh God. Uh, is it, uh, I think Horus? Kurs, Kurs is, is he? I think Kurs, Kurs, yeah. Horus, Horus and Fulgrim. Fulgrim. And I think Angron as well, but Angron's got a weird rule. So we don't count. Yeah, that. no, don't talk about that guy. Yeah, it's trash. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so, what we're saying, right, is uh, if you ever get a chance to take Ferris Manus, you take Ferris Manus, right? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. And this you does... put him in a big old unit of immortals. Well, he can't join immortals because he has oh, Of course, immortals. he can't do a bit of duty. Of course, he's yeah. got a bit of duty. So yeah. what I like to do with Ferris Manus... Is put him which... in a unit of 20 tack marines. Of uh, 20 breaches. 20 yeah, breaches. I can see that, he's... yeah. Because he's the only Primark that's heavy. So yeah. So he can't run, but he gets to re-roll arm, armor saves against blast weapons. Yeah. So you may as well, because if you put him in, in in a tactical squad, they can't run. You make them heavy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so you may as well put him in a unit that is also heavy. And you can put him with Terminators. You can make a big thousand-point Death Star that hits like a truck but can only ever really engage with one unit a turn. Or I like to, I, I like to just put him with Breachers, really tough, survivable Breachers. Yeah. And essentially just use them as almost ablative wounds and gorgon spike interceptor as well yeah we we had that interesting conversation about about ablative wounds for primarchs the other day and it's com- completely changed my thought yeah. process when it comes to kind of how i how i'm going to yeah, run yeah, horus yeah, yeah, in uh, yeah. in some of my lists so yeah because yeah like 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 horus as well is like a prime example you you can put them with just and they'll probably kill anything in the game yeah but the just can piss off and do just business elsewhere and you can exactly, just them as yeah, spoilers yeah. and away you go yeah and then and then because he's the one doing the real the, the heavy thing. lifting right yeah yeah, yeah. and ferris is ex- is exactly exactly the same as well and and having those weapons as well and the fact that you don't take modifiers to um to um the characteristics to characteristics you can shoot planes out the sky pretty e- easily you know yeah. I mean? you've got you got a, gra- a graviton shredder that hits on twos with a reroll and a plasma blaster you can overwatch as well and shoot those guns twice so you can pick out characters when they're coming in you can like a, a, a cool he, spy he, well. he also has a six up for no pain as well because he's because he's, he got, is. He's, he's got the iron hand special rule and he's in an army as yeah. himself mm, yeah so he also just has a six up for no pain, presumably. 
No, it, it's um only with infantry and legion of star. He's iron hands. So oh, uh, he doesn't have armor unit type. He's not infantry. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. And then I suppose that you beg the question, which is that if you're putting in with twenty breaches, do you put a apothecary? Which do you bother you... spending the points on it, or do you yeah. just take the six Well, you up? save points oh, from I mean... all the also similar you've just... Uh, you, you, it's you, true. You've yeah, absolutely. There's points <laughs> coming out of your ears, mate. Yeah. Basically <laughs> three, this guy. Yeah. Okay, but, uh, yeah, right. Sure. Uh, let's move on, because otherwise we're going to be here until tomorrow. And I've got planes <laughs> to catch in a few hours. Um, so, the uh, Gorgon Terminators. So, we talked earlier about uh, the Gorgon Terminator armour. Um, so the Gorgons are a bit of a weird one for me. I'll tell you for yeah. why. The reason is, is the fact that they are, um, are you up to skill four? Yeah. yeah. But are you, are you, are you not looking to build the Gorgons how you might sort of most other, uh, elite Terminators in other Legion armies, right? Who are typically more combat orientated. Yeah, exactly. So I think the best way to, t- to think about these Terminators as a whole is, why would you ever take Legion Terminators when you can take these Terminators? Yeah. They're, they're, they're like, they're kind of that Linnaean esque line where they're definitely better than any normal Terminator, but maybe they're not quite as good as some of the Legion specific weapons yeah. or five Terminators. So yeah. obviously they come that, with pretty some cool still. shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they've got, so they come with the Gorgon Terminator armor as standard. So they've got obviously all of their, like Fiona Pains and stuff sort of baked in yep. um, and the ability to blind. Um, they come with a uh, power axe and a combi bolter, the thunder hammer on the sergeant and a grenade harness. Um, they're stubborn, which is really good. Um, obviously we discussed the Fiona pain. Um, they can take normal kind of interesting uh, delicate transports, but it's their, they've got a, a really good array of, uh, of weapon and war gear options. So, what are the what are the standout things here? Well, without kind of going into too much detail, what are the kind of standout things that you you would maybe consider seeing on your gorgons? Yeah. So, what's really cool about the gorgon specifically is they can exchange their combi bolters for minor combi weapons, magna combi weapons, but also lightning claw, a single lightning claw. So, what you can do is you, is you can take a power fist in one arm and a yeah. lightning claw in the other. So, you get an extra attack because they're because they're specialist weapons. Yep. So they're three attack space, and it then gives you the option that if you need to just punch someone hard with the power fist, you can. But if you just want to shred some wheat, you can, yep. just, you, you can just use the lightning claw. So it's kind of a nice little thing that's that's cool. They're also initiative four now. They were previously initiative three, which is cool. So, so they go oh. at initiative with the lightning claw. Yep. Um, you, you can also buy them grav guns, so you can buy them grav shredders. Yep. So that's, that's just another tasty piece of war gear. Um, and they have feel no paint inbuilt. So unlike nearly every other Legion Terminator, yeah. they just cool. have it in build. Yeah. So yeah, these yeah. are pretty good. You definitely take these over cataphracts, I think. Yeah, you would do. Yeah, yeah. Would yeah. you would you think that these would make a good like if you were running like a like a Pride of the Legion list, would these make a good candidate yeah. for some of your troops? Yeah, these are cool. I think the problem is you can't they're not lying, obviously. Getting them line is tricky, but I've been yeah. trying something out recently with them that I think some people might want to try and try going forward. So what I do with these guys is I give them a war m- monger and yeah. a herald, and then you can yeah. put the you can put an iron father in them or your master legion got them as well. But if you deep strike these guys with the banner, especially, so they're fearless, so they can't be pinned by interceptor. Yeah. That they get line as well, which is awesome. They get it's also worth bearing well. in mind it's less less likely for from an intercepting reaction as well, or from reactions in general, or from shooting. That banner bear is less likely to be murdered out because yeah, yeah. of the uh, magician scales rule, right? So yeah. Yeah. of course, of course. And then when people do intercept you, you can then pass some armor saves, pass some involves, and then maybe force blind checks on people yeah. around you. So you can cause blind checks in the movement phase when people intercept you. People then shoot at you. You then shoot at them and they shoot back. You can do blind checks in the in the shooting phase. Then when you charge as well, people can overwatch you and you can do more, yep. more blind checks. More blind checks. So getting these guys right into the middle of enemy lines, forcing blind checks out. And they're really hardy given that inbuilt. Yeah. Of a yeah, yeah, as well, yeah. To be honest, yeah. Right. Second edition has such a large amount of strength for eight weapons. Which is one yeah. of the reasons why I think Iron Hands are really good, because there's so many straight sh- 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 yeah. eight weapons now that are only strength seven against them. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, you're getting a lot more use out of these guys as well as their Legion trait. Yeah, I think these guys, I like them. They're fun. Um, 
and they're enjoyable to use. And the models are cool as well. I like the models. Yeah, they're really, really good. Really, really nice. And I think um, if you can get your hands on some of like the, the new Indomitus from the 40k plastics, I think people are going to do some talented people are going to do some really incredible things with those. Some magical work. Yeah. Magical work. Magical. Speaking of magical, this, yeah, is, this, the, is, uh... this is it, right? I mean, we've already discussed how good the models are and we've kind of delved into how they fit so nicely into company bitter iron but what makes these guys so i mean i've played you enough times now to know what makes these guys good. but for people who haven't had the privilege yet will of facing Name you the pleasure in a game the pleasure of, of playing you at an event um why are they just the bane of my entire fucking life yeah so these guys are quintessential unit iron hand unit of just they just exist they're just an absolute it's what well, in company of bitter Ryan specifically when they yep. get line and heart of the legion and, and they become troops so they free up your elite slots as well these guys are just so annoying to get rid of yeah and, they're impossible to get rid of yeah and they just get on an objective and they just sit on that objective and what's interesting about these guys as well is they're, they're leadership 10 base which is yep. just mental and they're stuck on the base yeah so they get on objectives. They just, or they just go into combats, and you have to kill most of the time. You have to kill every single one to get out of that combat. And yeah. they're they're not bad in combat. Like they got two they got attacks, two attacks base. base, right? Yeah, two attacks yeah. in their profile again is, yeah. is pretty rare. And considering they're hiding behind a boarding shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got three up, five ups. They're iron hands, so they're annoying to shoot at. Yeah. In combat, they're pretty annoying. They get hatred if you're taking that right of war as well. But actually, something I've just read here that's, that I've been playing wrong every <laughs> game up until now is their movement seven. I thought they were movement, movement six, six because they're breaches. So they're marginally faster than normal breaches, which is insane to think. And then they just get a really good selection of weapons to add into. They're them also as well. heavy as well. So if you shoot blast oh, yeah. weapons at them, like you know, like let's for argument's sake say you're landing a Scorpius shell on them, yeah. like you're not going to be doubling them out. They're going to yeah. be, you know, and if you're not rending, then they're going to be getting three ups with a reroll and then a, a four up if they're on an objective. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just oh, they're just motherfuckers. And and also not only that, they've got access to some some really really good war gear, like. I think certainly for me, the fact that it's a case of like it's any model in a in an immortal squad exchanges bolter for a Volkite charger for two points. It's almost like an auto take. I yeah, take when you're not. When, when is there a situation where you're not going to take Volkite chargers? Exactly. Yeah, but then even if you don't take the Volkites, the chainsaw for free is a pretty good option. Yeah, like, these guys having hatred, mm -hmm. rerolling to hit and rerolling to wound with two or three attacks if. If they're charging, I also think as well, like chain, chain, chain bayonets on their bowers as well. Like, not to yeah. be, then again, if you're spending two points on that, you're going to buy the Volkite charger on it. Let's be perfectly honest. Yeah. The only problem about the bayonet options on the bolters is that they can't actually use them because they've got boarding shields. Oh, of course they can't. Yeah. yeah. So the bayonets are two handed for some yeah. reason. So even uh, though they're, even though they're expert pros at shooting yeah. guns one handed, if you put a little blade on the front, pff, can't do it. Just yeah, can't. Sergeant can take a thunder hammer. You got one in five guys can take a uh, a melter gun, a graviton gun, or shredder, or a las cutter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, so, where's the where's where's the weakness? Will how do you what how do you deal with immortals? Like, I think that's very important to know. Is do you just ignore them? Yeah. So I either think you either you either ignore invest them in, everything in yeah. trying to get rid of them. Yeah. You can't just you can't just take them apart piecemeal, right? You it's an all or nothing approach. Hundred percent. It's Leave them or do everything you can to get rid of them. If yep. granted, if if you if you really charge them with good with good combat units with lots of attacks, yeah, you will just you you will chew chew through them. But kind of what they want you to do is kind of do that. They kind of want to yeah. they kind of want to lull your big like big murder teams in. Yeah. Because they can of, take it, right? They'll tie exactly. and they'll tar pit that big murderer team up for the entirety of the entire game. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, these guys are good. These guys are, they are quite expensive, like like a 20-man block with Volkites, Melt Guns, Thunder Hammer on the Sergeant. It gets to about 500 points. Um, and then you might right. want to invest characters in, into them as well. Not as expensive as Reavers. Not as 800-point <laughs> yeah. as, as Reavers, whatever it is. But 
they are really good at just existing and being yeah. a real, real annoying threat. They are the, the thorn in my side. Yeah, yeah. They're cool. Yeah. One thing to note as well is, yep. is if you when they get Heart of the Legion, Heart of the Legion actually confers to independent characters as well. Mm. So if your Iron Father is within the unit and the unit and half of the unit is within six of an of an objective, Heart mm. Legion confers to him. So he gets a yeah, block on a pen as well. That. That's very interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah so then if you've got characters with Gorg and Terminator armor, they get the Phil No Pain built in and then they get Heart Legion as well from being in this unit, which yeah. is pretty cool. Oh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Fuck off, Iron Which Hands, honestly. Pretty tasty. And that's then you could do is. blind checks when you shoot oh, them as well. Because that's enough. We're moving on, we're moving on. That's it. Take Get more. Out of You're going to bother doing anything with this guy anymore? Um, I, I, so, uh, I mean, the first thing I'd though to say is you have so few special units. You have two, right, in the, in the current yeah. Um, Which is not. And then I, I did. That's a good point, that... Rob. Sorry. I, I, I was being flippant there because let's be honest, the fucking immortals just feel like. Yeah. I, I oh. think the thing is that basically. The, the Iron Hands feel like a um, uh, the, quite quite low on Legion uh, special characters, obviously, and special rules. Uh, sorry, uh, on, uh, on on units. Um, but what they do have is overlapping rules, which overlap with those particular units very well. Yeah. Um, and Correct. it makes them really hardy. Uh, I did think, so Autic Moore, Will, was a character who was almost like an auto-include for many people in the in the first edition. Um, oh, he he actually gave the third enemy, didn't he, to any unit I think he was with, or he chose yeah. a unit, and it was often the one that he was with, yeah. uh, which which was great. Um, but his warlord trait, I just couldn't understand it at all. I thought I really think it's a poor warlord trait for somebody's at, at, at two hundred and twenty five points. Now, bear in mind, he is a, I guess he is a, um, a uh, legacy. Yeah, his legacy unit. So we know that those they are. Hit or yeah, very yeah, yeah. very big swings the legacy but, and they are either big hits or huge misses. Yeah, yeah. but he he basically though is th- that sixty five point upgrade, isn't he, for that um, uh, for the Iron Father because he's yeah. essentially a, an Iron Father. Right? Exactly, so he, yeah. he's got a two up, three up, um, five up because of feel no pain. Yeah, what does he have feel no pain? Yeah, yeah, it's inbuilt into his armor. So, all oh, right, okay, cool. Um, mm. uh, but his wall of trade. So I'll just read this for 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 everybody because it's um. So he's pretty. He's pretty. He's he's basically a praetor, but he's. Oh, I'm he's settling a, in. I'm settling in. Um. So, get this. So any unit made up of models with the legions to start his iron hand special rule that a warlord with this trait has joined may add plus one to the amount of wounds caused when calculating who has won in close combat. So you could draw, and then he's got a big cylinder, could, right? You could win, right? So that that is good. It's not amazing, but it's all right. But then it says at the end of the combat, after piling or consolidation moves made, a unit that has added this bonus. So if you use this bonus, if you use that plus one, uh, suffers a single wound with no armor saves or damage mitigation rolls allowed. Now, it, am I reading that right? Which basically, if you use that rule, that plus one, you basically suffer a wound. And you can only take a invulnerable save. You can't use an armor save or a, or a damage. Sounds like hot garbage. Pretty much, yeah. It's that, what a it's mad pretty trash, trait. and it doesn't really make any sense either. Um, the only good thing about that water trap is that you get a shooting reaction. That's like the only good thing about it. Beyond yeah, that, so he's basically like, okay, we won this combat, right, lads. Yeah. We've inspired everybody to win, and also I'm just going to shoot my friend in the head <laughs> as a result of like winning yeah. this. Like it doesn't. It just. It felt like a really odd one because he's quite a cool character. Yeah, really you're, cool. probably, yeah. you're probably just going to take a, a paragon bladed uh, Iron Father if you want something similar, right? Yeah, to, yeah. to this. Yeah. Um, the funny thing about this, especially, is the fact that he's fearless. So, right? Why? What? Like, like even if he loses combat, it doesn't matter because it's, <laughs> right, it's yeah. not going anywhere anyway. So, okay, yeah. Maybe if you draw, like. Yeah, yeah so I suppose you, you, you could it, then you be like, oh, break. look, I win. Yeah. But, and he isn't in Cataphracty, so he can sweep. Um, okay. But it's, it, it's yeah, like... It, it, it's not it's not great, especially when compared to the generic yeah. ones, right? You know, just yeah. like preferred enemy. Like, yeah, and, um, and the fact that you pay so much for him and you get a trash yeah. trait like that, you yeah, get a shooting not... reaction, but that's, 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 that's the only good thing about it. 
So, and then yeah. um, he he has a slightly, I mean, basically a paragon blade, doesn't he? With reefing blow, but plus two strength. You know, slightly better better paragon yeah. blade, really. Yeah, he, um, he, he's got quite a lot of attacks because he's got a strength six machinator array, which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, is that different from a normal machinator array? The minute yeah, normal strength. Well, yeah. So he gets an extra strength on it, which is awesome. But right. he loses the metal gun and, and the flamer. The flamer. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So he's a he's a. Yeah, I think he's in an odd place. Is that when I was reading these rules, I thought he was in an odd odd odd, odd place to be. Honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the next, right. guy, cool. yeah. the next guy. He's cool. The next guy. If we just go to this one, I thought it was a great alternative to a Delegatus, actually. If you wanted to keep it cheap, you know, you're saying that you use um, the head of the Gorgon. But I thought this guy had Master of the Legion, uh, basically Praetor stats, but he came yeah. in at 135 points. I thought that was was fairly reasonable. I mean, he's not an absolute dick kicker, but a good alternative. But nor should he be at 135 points either, right? No, yeah. no. So, you know, important things here. He's weapon skill six, not too shabby. Uh, exactly. He's got four attacks, uh, leadership 10, two up, and he's got uh, Iron Halo as well, four up. So, he's a, you know, he's a Praetor, essentially. He's got uh, Master of the Legion. Um, he's loyalist only, Madra, uh, Shadrach, and Houston. And, and to, to note about this guy, he was um, he was like the leader of the guerrilla campaign, right? Against exactly. Horus, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or took the lead in some of the guerrilla operations against yeah. them. Uh, now he used to be absolutely awesome, didn't he? In um, in the previous edition, yeah. uh, you know, he did some really cool stuff with uniting shattered legions together. Uh, but his warlord trait now, so he basically the unit he gains, they basically gain furious charge, which I is think you know, that's fantastic. Put them with the right unit, maybe a squad of vet- iron hand veterans, for example. I think that this could be could, could be really really cool. Um, Got more rocks. Uh, Sorry, what? What's that? Got Morlocks, maybe. Oh yeah, all Morlocks. Yeah, yeah. Jonas Gordon Morlocks. Um, strength nine, power fists. Ooh. Yeah, that would be that would be really good. Uh, and then he gains an additional reaction in the imposing phase assault phase. So he's not too shabby. One hundred thirty-five points, and his Albion Parrier Gladius plus one strength, AP three, but it's got breaching, uh, breaching five up. Based and he's a melee weapon as well, so he has an additional attack. For... Yeah, oh, it doesn't come. Oh yeah, it comes with an architect pistol. Yeah, it does. Yeah. He does so he goes uh, five, six attacks on the charge, which is not too shabby. Um, not too shabby at all for 135 points. I think yeah. definitely worth taking if you want a cheap uh, alternative to a price. Super themey as well. I also exactly. think as well if you yeah. if you turn up and be like, oh, I've got Shadrach Magician, people are gonna be like, oh, good, fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, cool. You're, that's, yeah. That's, you're yeah, forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think um, you were spot on the money there, Rob. In that, if you're playing a thousand points, fifteen hundred points, I think this guy's perfect. Yeah, he's um, great. Yeah. A when you get cheeky, three thousand points, a spend. little cheeky furious charge on your unit as well. Yeah, That's yeah, pretty yeah. tasty, isn't it? It's nice though. Adds yeah. up, yeah, and yeah, and and he's still got three wounds, a two up and a four up. He's still annoying to get rid of, and yeah, he's pretty cheap. Yeah, I like. Uh, he really strikes me as like uh, the alternative side to the legion. We've really seen like yeah. this Iron Father side quite a lot, where you add like cyber familiars and it ups their technology and stuff like that. He just feels like. The brutal element of the Legion is just a normal dude without a punch cyber familiar. Really hard. Yeah. Exactly. He's just like, yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of like that dichotomy yeah. that that he provides to the Legion. I think. Let's just go to war and let's just conduct the war against Horus. Grab your exactly. gear. Let's go. Literally Come that, on. isn't it? Yeah, 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 exactly that. But then we come to these guys. Do you want to take us through these guys, Paul? Because this was a big boon to the Iron Hands when this <laughs> yes. dropped. When because like they needed it, right? Uh, yeah, so take us through these because they they are basically everyone I know. It, it takes a squad of these because they they're just a brilliant unit. You know? Yeah, so these were so when I remember when um we started getting uh, legacy units, um I was saying we're gonna get Morlocks. Iron Hands are gonna get Morlocks. You will all <laughs> rue the day that Iron Hands are gonna get m- yeah Morlocks. <laughs> and, and we the, did we ruined uh, it. Uh, we ruined uh, it good. And we did, uh, but. But these were, along with the Blood Angels, these were the last legacy units that were... R- exemplary released. battle, not legacy. Sorry. Thank you, John. Thank you. They were no. exemplary battles. But we waited and we got rewarded beautifully. So these are Weapon Skill 5 Combat Iron Hand Terminators, which are great. Um, based on the Morlocks, so the first company of the of the Iron Hands, the ones that went with Ferris down to his fan 5, and subsequently all kind of died. But some survived. Some got off world. And I think what's really cool about that well, is that... between three and five survived. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so rather than you can't take big ten man blocks of these, the most you could take is five, which I, yeah. I actually think is kind of great. I actually yeah. 
qu- quite like that a lot. Person, personally, yeah, yeah. I would have liked to have seen these be naught to one. Yeah, yeah. I think that could be a potential but, issue. But anyway, by the by. Yeah, yeah. So they have got a a, a vast selection of weapons that they can take. Um, you can buy them a Legion standard. Yeah, just Legion. Yeah, okay, because they're a command squad, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So usually you have to um take a take them as a retinue and yeah. then they gain like a one guy can exchange his power yeah. for a, a legion standard. A flag. Yeah. Yeah. But these guys you can just buy it for them. So you can just you and they're an HQ slot. So you can just take these as your warlord, which is yeah, so a, your augmentor, your compulsory could, HQ. Yeah, your but your augmenter could be your warlord, right? Correct, yeah, yeah. And he's like he's no slouch. He's as no. good as as a centurion in yeah. combat, so he's pretty good. Yeah. And then you can buy them an augury scanner, you can buy them a Vox, which is cool. You can buy them a selection of weapons. Most point is you can't buy them Thunderhanders, which I kind saying. of understand why you wouldn't want to give a really good combat unit Thunder Hammers, but yeah. There are also Iron Hands. They're famed for their arts yeah, with the yeah, hammers yeah, and yeah. Yeah. weapons and looking after themselves. So from a law perspective, it, it would make a lot of sense. But yeah. then if, if you could give them Thunder Hammers, they'd always have them. Be, yeah, exactly right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then... Um, they'd be can, dominators. Yeah, they'd just be... the They'd be dominating even dominators. Mm. Which <laughs> they would, to be um, fair. You can, we, we've you can... glossed over, by the way, the fact that they got battle-hardened one. Oh, I was saving that till last. Yeah. Mm. My... Don't get that past me, mate. So no, it goes, it goes <laughs> stats, war gear, special rules, choices. So stats, war gear, battle hardened. Yeah, yeah got it in the bin. Yeah, yeah they're stubborn. <laughs> they've got battle hardened. They're just great. I mean, they're so good. Yeah, yeah. So... I, I would like to so just to point out a couple of things uh, with this. Well, so number one, every Morlock, bear in mind everything you just said, plus the battle hardened, as John said. Is thirty five points, which is the same points as a Gorgon Terminator. So, like, just baseline, same points, Gorgon Terminator, which is yeah. the first. Average. The first three are a hundred uh, are fifty points each. To be fair, fifty points, yeah, fifty points each. But the the subsequent ones are, are thirty five points. The the other thing is that you can give them grav guns or graviton guns, yeah. which means yeah. that you can upgrade them to the have shredders. graviton shredders, right? Yeah, and then in the head of the Gorgon. Does they do they become just graviton shredders for free? Is that am I right in saying that? Or do Correct, I need to Yeah, that? yeah. They are just ten points for a grav shredder at that point. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you're just gonna basically shoot at a tank, get whatever's out of it, and then charge whatever's in the tank. Right. Exactly. So because you can you can charge units that come out of transports that you destroy in the shooting phase. Yeah, that's so, yeah, right. So so you can roll the... up in your Proteus. <laughs> you can. Pop off, bundle out. yeah, bundle out. You can you're obviously your Iron Hands pattern Proteus with the the five last cannon shots. It's <laughs> gonna uh, uh, five will not die. Uh, yeah, die. It will not die. Yeah, so you can trundle forwards, knowing that you're pretty much bang on likely to get there. You can then zip off a fucking handful of last cannon shots. <laughs> then got ten graviton shredders plus whatever the assigned character with them is going to have. Yeah, and then you can just smash the shit out of whatever's inside. Charge them inside. Oh, you, yeah. you, you, you've got power fists in there. We don't care. We're power <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, it is pretty off the chain, but they are loyalists only, right? So you they can't are, take these as, yeah. a, as, a, as a tracer unit. So, uh, right, rightly so. The one thing I think is the most amazing thing about this unit is the Augmentor can take a bulk height cold for it. Like, isn't that so cool? That's absolutely brilliant. And I love little things like this. It just makes yeah. like with the same thing with the not the Atramentor, the uh Contacar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They can yeah. they all have old parts, right? Yeah. Cool. I love little things like that. It's just like one guy. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. It's just nice. It's just yeah. nice like flavour in it. Like you can run yeah. these guys on foot and just while they're trundling along trying to find something to, to punch, you can just like Little five man recon team up there. Have some yeah, rounds. Five, five, <laughs> five shots of Volpo. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah, uh, it, it's a, it's an also include this unit. Like basically, isn't it? Let's let's be honest. Because of the battle hard. If exactly. you're and the fact that they can be scoring because they can have a flag. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're just so good. And um, another lovely little touch that if you're playing against Empress children, they get preferred enemy Empress children. Love it. Oh, uh, would I need one final thing before we move on and wrap up? Um. 
would I need strength 11 weapons to double these guys out in shooting? You are correct. Right. Yeah. So that's pretty nuts. That's 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 crazy horses, is that? Yeah, strength so weapon. so so their toughness four, but their yeah. toughness five for the purpose of instant death. Yeah. So then you your strength ten. Yeah. But you're an iron hand, so you strength nine, so you yeah. don't double them out. So you need to be eleven or higher 11 to actually higher. instant kill these guys. Yeah. But then if you had a biomancy librarian give them plus one toughness, oh! so you would then uh, need strength thirteen to yeah. potentially double them out. Which that's crazy. Not not even typhons are that. So you could potentially take a that's... nice big chunk on a typhon round as it is thrown Absolutely into. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. <laughs> well, with, with that, should we go to our closing uh, closing thoughts on uh, the Iron Hands Legion? Yeah. Um, so, John, what's your final thoughts on the Iron Hands? I mean, they they are. I, I... The, the the issue that I have with the Iron Hands is the fact that I've largely my opponents that I've played against them have been Will, right? <laughs> Who <laughs> has not only a phenomenal grasp of the Legion, but a phenomenal grasp of the rules and a phenomenal collection of miniatures. Meaning yeah, that he yeah. can pretty much choose what he wants at Liberty. Um, and he can't help himself, but take powerful list inside a powerful Legion. Yeah, but yeah. but even when you kind of like you boil it down, they're just really really good. Even if you were just to take sixty or eighty tactical marines, they're better than everyone else's tactical marines. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. just like uh, uh, the basic. Uh, uh, it's very basic form. They're just better than the majority of other legions. Yeah, and they're I also very that's... forgiving as well. Yeah, yeah, they are, and I think that. I think it's a real shame that more isn't written about them from a Black Library perspective because I think actually they're really interesting. I think they could be very, yeah, yeah. I think that <clears throat> they're a genuinely interesting legion. I I really like. Uh, I think from they look really cool. They're not like a striking army on the table. They're like a, a cool army on the tabletop as well. Yeah. Um. I think there's loads of really interesting modeling opportunities around kind of what you can do with them in terms of bringing elements from like the mechanic side of things and the cogs and the chains and. You know, the chain mail and the augmetics and the bionics and this, that, and the other. Um, and the fact that they're like super, super, super tough as well. I think, um, I think they're one of those, uh, like we talked. Do you remember when we did the Iron Hand, the Iron Hands, Iron Warriors review like many moons ago? And we talked about how they're a really good, uh, like kind of entry point into the heresy, right? Because they're quite a forgiving army to paint and they're quite a forgiving army to play. And I think that if you wanted to play loyalists, this is almost where you'd end up now. I think with Iron Hands, I think they're they're that they're that good. Yeah, I think it's. I think you're very very spot on. As as a as a way to get into Heresy, to paint your first army, to learn yeah. how to learn how the game plays, to still stand a good chance against people that are more experienced. Yeah, they're they're a very good um, early intro esque Legion to play. Um, their rules are very forgiving as well. You can forget this and you can put units out of position here and get s snapped on by this and stuff. And you can still kind of endure and survive. Mm -hmm. um, but then as well, when you get like good players that have good grasps of rules and yeah. understandings and interactions as well, what you can do with them is you can, you can add this and, and, and chop that and you can really take them up to some really potentially tizzying heights. Yeah, um, I also think as well, right? Because you kind of is, have an answer for everything almost. Yeah, precisely. But but also as well, and I think this is a concept that you've maybe not come across yet, but um, you can you can really pick the cool stuff you want to take and it can fit into the army and be good. You haven't necessarily got to go with the most synergized aspect. Definitely, like you can, yeah, like yeah. if you want to do like a, like a jet bike heavy army, it's better than the jet bike heavy armies that exist in the game. Yeah. If you do a yeah. bike heavy army, you want to do like a recon company or scouts, this, that, and the other, like they're just great in whatever flavor you pick them in. And that's really nice because it does sort of fit into that kind of cog within a kind of a, within a machine kind of aspect that they, the Legion composition has. Um, but they're just good. They're just really fucking good. No matter how you want to play, no matter what you want to put into the army, you can't really get it wrong. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think one of the things that I realise about them is 
nothing really jumps off the paper at you at being yeah you know like with the emperor's children like they're really like flamboyant and like yeah arty and perfection and they're really evocative in kind of how they are mm. these guys aren't they're like they're just cold hard remorseless murderers conquerors yeah. even and i think that's very they reflective. play as intended right exactly weirdly they play very as if they play as they are written which is the strange yeah. thing about it um but as a result, you've got on the tabletop a really tough, resilient, hard legion that can kind of do every aspect of the game very well, which is pretty cool. And yeah. as you said about like jet bikes and bikes, like they can make just normal, basic, general units better. Actually, just better. Like yeah, you can shoot melter guns at their jet bikes, and you you have to shoot a hundred percent more to kill them because yep. they're not instant killed, which is yeah. just insane. that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. interesting. I I think um. Uh, I, we we did get Will to uh, create a list for us, but I'm conscious that we're all, we're probably gone past the two hour mark. So maybe we can get Will. Oh to yeah, that that on. that came and went a long time ago. Right? Um, maybe we can get Will back on the show to do to do his list. Yeah, yeah. But what, one final thing, just as a thought. So really, really strong um, Legion, but um, just it, you know, I was thinking, how would I do them? You know, if I was to do them, how would I do them differently? And I think that the um, not not the head of Gordon, what's the the company of Better Iron? I would do right. that, but I think I would because everybody can get bitter juicy. Um, I would try and lean into a destroyer company of oh, iron hands, yeah, yeah. opposed to say, um, uh, like the 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 immortals, right? Or at least if you took two squads of immortals, then everything else can be like a destroyer company because then you can put your praetor characters or whatever with your uh, destroyers, which yeah. is not something any legion can do because the other legions just can't buy this of duty. Uh, so yeah. I think that um, that might be a cool uh, combination and something that I would, you know, maybe like Phosphex, you know, Siege Breaker or whatever with Phosphex in, in, from, from um, rapiers or things like that or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some cool things you can do. Um, exactly. Say really hardy, really cool list. And if you're just getting into Horus Heresy or thinking about starting a new force and you've only just got into it from 2.0, then, Iron Hands might be a a, a good reliable uh, yeah. legion. Reliable legion. is is the way, right? Dependable, dependable boys. They're not gonna, they're not going to let you down. The last event I played, at, which was uh, w- which was Dan's event, about the five games I played, I was playing Traitor. I played three Iron Hands uh, lists. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, and I won Cause... against two, but one completely murdered me. They're just yeah. so the dreadnoughts are just. Damn tough. Damn they're, tough. They're really like last cannon kind of shooting the Vipers and winning on fours. It's just yeah. Like, oh what? man, yeah. Like, that, <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that what broke was this? Yeah, no. yeah, that yeah. that was uh, that was intense. Yeah, yeah. that was unhelpful. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I think it, I think it is yeah. quite interesting that in first edition they were r- very rare and few and far between. It yeah. was you and no one else. Yeah, yeah, and in second edition. Three Looking everywhere, man. Three out of five games. Sixty percent of your weekend was playing Iron Hands. Is absolutely is yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. It was nuts. I enjoyed all my games, but yeah, of course, of course, course. marvelous yeah. times. Yeah. Cool. Should we? Uh, should we see this one out, John? Uh, let's do it. The Witching Hour doth approach. Um, but before <laughs> that, we've got to get through this one. So, um, as you uh, may remember, what well, now feels like yesterday ago, but it was only merely a couple of hours. Um, <laughs> these are the wonderful people who have supported us via our Patreon at the uh, prayer to level tier. So, just to uh, reiterate one last time, if you want to get your hands on the Castle Crusher miniature uh, kit, you'll need to subscribe by the uh, the midnight on the 31st of August to our Praise of Level Tier Patreon. But if you are wanting to support us in other ways, we have uh, several tiers. Um, the uh, Just to, so you, in case you're aware, we go into sort of tactical depth on a number of topics on our separate Patreon-only Tactica shows. We have getting on for like 40 or 45 hours additional content now available on the Patreon, which is available from just uh, three pounds a month to get all of that additional content. And if you want to be included in the uh, draw to potentially win a, uh, a console painted by uh, one of the team, uh, we draw that every four months and that's available on our uh, Centurion level tier at five pounds. And then it's 13 to get hold of everything else. Um, but super special thanks to all these people who will be receiving their Castle Crusher in the post very soon. Uh, so, 
TSC Paints, Charles Hawkins, Eric Brennan, Chris Keith, Harley Mann, Benny422, Flinty, Peter, Jan Van Gooch. Apologies if I've butchered your name, Peter. I'm very sorry. Um, Joe, uh, Jack Silence, Henrik Rasmussen, Lurpy Wargaming, Alistair Croxon, Alex Freeman, Jared Cope, Benjamin Lengacher, Tara, uh, Taranis, uh, Andy Dudley, Stephen Daniel, Gareth Morris, Jack Stilwell, Lewis Hibbins, Mark Gallagher, Unexplained Miniatures, Matthew Fuller, uh, Keontes George, Ethan Brule, Big T Painting, Callum Falcus, Clayton Unruh, WH underscore Black Panzer, Craig the Celt, James McAvoy, Kevin Abramel, Nicholas Drax, Andrew G, James uh, Apostate Terrain, That Guy Lazar, Saigon Sadler, Chris Levitt, Julian, Mark Ainsworth, uh, Dale Barrett, Kerry Love, Alex Robinson, Tom Spear, Harren Hamat and Nails 40k, Richard Harris, uh, Chthonic Water Beast, Simon Whitehouse, Peter King, Thomas Clark, Ashley Bowley, Pete Day, Al. Randy Overland, Igor Povolotsky. I need to move you boys out of the way. Um, Bradley Slutz, Patrick Greenstreet, Mike Dorset Wolf, Richard Willis, Tom Hayward, Ben Robinson, Ben Eyde, Gore Crow, John McArdle, and finally, but by no means least, Thomas Silverstrand. Thank you so much. That is quite an exhaustive list now. And that's just our top level Patreon. That's just the these top level. These are these are friends of the show, but we've oh, got 163 I mean, friends of the show. Yeah, uh, all together. Wild, which is crazy. Um, worth bearing in mind as well, we will post an update as to what the next Praetor give, uh, sorry, reward will be very soon. So keep your eyes peeled to the Patreon too. And even if you did miss out on the Castle Crusher, you may uh, want to get involved in the next round of toys. Um, we've still got a couple of people to say thank you to as well for their continued sponsorship of the show. Um, Bits Monster, uh, I've actually got a Bits Monster basket open at the moment, so because I need a few bits and bobs. So um, if you need something from a bit, a bit of a kit, don't want to buy an entire huge box for one specific model, then head over to bitsmonster.com, get all your bits split down. Um, they offer free UK shipping over £25 and very, very reasonable rates of international shipping. And if you use the code HERESYHAMMER at checkout, you'll get an additional 10% off all Heresy items. Cryptic Cabin, uh, you'll have seen their advert earlier in the show, but uh, extra special thanks, long-time supporters of the show. Uh, Rob, have you got anything coming up at Cryptic Cabin booked in yet? I know, obviously... Uh, no, I don't. Okay, well, don't worry about it then in that case, but just go and buy there and shop instead. <laughs> Um and lastly, um, if you'd like to submit your miniatures on Instagram for our deliberation, you can do so using the hashtag Heresy Hammer. Uh, we would love it if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Um, it really uh feeds Rob's ego and my sanity and having to put up with him. <laughs> so please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, comment uh, below as to what we got wrong, what you'd like to see. Um. What you like about Iron Hands, what you hate about Iron Hands, um, what we got wrong in our preview predictions, and um, share it amongst your friends. If you've got a list or any comments or kind of feedback, you can submit it via email at heritagehammer30k at gmail.com. And if you like what we do and you like to support the show, we really appreciate it. And you can do so via Patreon by visiting patreon.com and searching for Heresy Hammer. And that, finally, is my end of the show soliloquy completed. You it may was now marvelous. Have... It was beautiful. It's Thank you to so be much. here for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's been Keep an absolute paint. pleasure yeah. to um spend my evening in the company of two of my favorite people. Um, I wouldn't have it any other way. It was. Thank you so much for having me on, guys. It was oh, truly yeah. a pleasure. Thank you. Well, I think we are we are the ones who are more more appreciative. Oh, no, 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 no. So I'm going to go make Iron Hands this. I think now. For <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's I funny. So. It's destroy funny. a company. Is it? It's funny you said that because that's literally the risk the list that I wrote. No, <laughs> was it? Preview, so. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, well, we definitely got to get you on then. Okay, right. You, you two can go and suck each other off, and I'm going to bed so. <laughs> with uh, cybernetic arms. It'd be perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, your flaccid tendrils. Yeah. Uh, right, we're off. So we look forward to seeing you for the next one very shortly. And uh, yeah, yours and heresy. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Okay. Champagne. <laughs>